Joe Biden gave a speech today on this J6 Eve where he said, I kid you not, that we almost lost this country over January 6th. And my response immediately was like, wow, if a thousand dudes who are unarmed rioting at a government building is enough to destroy this nation, we're going to have to cancel all of our foreign wars and foreign funding because we are we are much too weak to be involved in any kind of war. If a thousand unarmed dudes rioting at the Capitol is going to destroy the fabric of this nation. Of course, Joe Biden's full of it. And it's not true. But this is his his play, I guess. January 6th is tomorrow. It's the anniversary. And uh, this is his big uh, his 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 pitch to the American people as to why we should vote for him again, I guess. You know, I got, I got to say. It's actually quite remarkable because I remember all the other campaigns where they'd say something like John McCain is bad on taxes and bad on America. And it's like taxes. That was the issue. Now you got Joe Biden making videos where he says half this country is evil and wants to kill you. And it's like, oh, that's a heck of a a campaign strategy. So we'll talk about that. And uh, I got to be honest, there are are a bunch of really great and important news stories. But I'm going to say this one instead. Aliens. Because in Miami... NBC News reports aliens. Okay, so here's what happened. Some kids were fighting with sticks and fireworks. People reported it as gunshots. The police show up. And then for some reason online, people claimed that eight foot tall shadow alien beings were being shot at. And NBC picked the story up. Of course, they call they, they actually put in the headline LOL. But uh, it's Friday, so we're gonna we're gonna have fun. We'll talk about all this stuff. Before we get started, my friends, head over to castbrew.com. To buy Cast Brew Coffee. Why? Because it is the best dang coffee you'll ever have. Appalachian Nights is so good. Whole bean sold out. But we are about to get a, a, a new stock of the Whole Bean Appalachian Nights ground coffee. Still available. And of course, everyone's favorite, Rise with Roberto Jr. We got decaf. We got decaf Sleepy Joe. I got to tell you, it's a great gift for your friends and family to buy them a bag of Sleepy Joe coffee because it's funny. It's hilarious. We also got K-Cups. If you want to support the show, you go to Casper.com. You buy coffee because we sponsor ourselves. And this is our coffee company. We are also working on our coffee shops. The work is happening. Trust me, the equipment is in. And uh, it, it's looking now like I know everyone's going to groan when they hear this. We, we, we got contractors. We're going over the paperwork. April. By April, we should have this beautiful and amazing coffee shop up and, up and ready. And I trust these guys. Because they finished our new studio already. So the new studio is done. All we have to do, I should say the the construction is done. Now we're waiting for technical work. But these guys are also like, we're going to get your coffee shop done. It'll be done by April. It's going to be huge. Support us and uh, get involved if you'd like. But also head over to TimCast.com. Click join us. Become a member. We got tickets for members only to the Iowa Caucus Show. On January 15th in Iowa, in Des Moines, we will have live audience seats very small amount i think it's only 50 and we're probably we're we're probably going to sell out in 10 minutes from now but you're going to be hanging out up close and personal with the crew we got security everything's going to be great we're going to have a rotating group of people from the caucus different political campaigns hanging out explaining what's going on as we talk about this it'll probably be an extended show and it's and i gotta tell you it's not so much that you're buying tickets to an event you're you're this is this is not so much like an auditorium event where you're sitting in a chair in front of a stage this is more like you are coming into a building with everyone to hang out during the Iowa caucus. That's why there's very few tickets. We're taking security very seriously, and it's why they're a bit more expensive. But become a member at TimCast.com if you want to support us and you want to buy those tickets. Smash the like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends. Joining us tonight to talk about this and a whole lot more is Representative Alex Mooney. Hey, great to be with you. Great to be with you. Um, so we, you're a member thoughts, of Congress. Yeah, yeah. Represent West Virginia, half That's the right. state, 27 counties. District number two, but it's a uh, half state. Most of my colleagues are congressmen. There's one of 10. They represent maybe 10% of the state. But in my case, uh, I have the pleasure of representing half the state. And they changed around the districts last cycle. I've actually represented two thirds of the state. Wow. So that's great. So uh, you're our rep for our rep. We're not, we're not currently yeah. at our West Virginia studio yet because it's being built. But uh, for where I live and for where we're setting up everything, you will, you will be our rep. And, uh, but you're also you're running for the Senate. Running for the Senate. Republican primary May, May 14th. Joe, Joe Manchin has chosen to retire. Everyone's seen that. Good. Everywhere. Yeah. I, don't think he, I think he knew he couldn't win anyway. So and yeah. there's, there's no other Democrat that's of any credibility that anybody can think of that could run. So uh, most people are well aware this is 100%. Whoever wins the Republican primary is, is going to win the general election. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. When uh, when we were first moving to the area, uh, Cassandra Fairbanks, uh, now Cassandra McDonald, mm-hmm. she was like, we got to find a way to get this guy in the show. You're going to love him. He's like Ron Paul. And I was like, really? She's like, yeah, he wants the gold standard. And I, I was, do want the gold standard. Yeah, I was like, all right, cool. Oh. So we finally got you here. Yeah. 
So, uh, and you also have a bunch of resolutions. I, I have in front the of bill you. on the gold standard. <laughs> I wasn't sure what was going to come up on the show. So, House Resolution two four three five. You can look it up because I'm an elected official. I'm in, in my tenth year in Congress, and then a lot of people running for office say what they're going to do, what they promise to do in the future. I like to talk about what I've actually done, what what I've actually shown to do, put in. I'm the first congressman to put in a bill to return our country to the gold standard since Jack Kemp in, 19, wow. in the 1980s. But I'm in good company. Uh, Ronald Reagan was for it. Uh, uh, Donald Trump said he was supporting. Uh, Ted Cruz, many others. So it is a good thing to do. I've done my research and you know, we're looking at inflation today and all the games played with monetary policy and the Fed and so much government intervention in the free market in so many ways. Returning to the gold standard, we'll get that under control. It's going to be fun. you got a bunch of other bills too, but we'll talk about all this. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out. Should be fun. we got Carter Banks hanging out. What's up, everyone? Carter Banks here. All things music at uh, Tim Cast and Trash House and just hanging out, showing off this bandana that Jessica made me. Oh, cool. So, yeah, we got right, Phil cool. as well. Hello, everybody. My name is Phil Labonte, uh, lead singer of the heavy metal band All That Remains, failed musician, anti communist, counter revolutionary. <laughs> Serge. Yes, I'm here. Uh, I wanted to shout out Suit and Tie Guy. Thanks for this record, man. I appreciate the record a lot. It looks like the old Tracks records from Chicago um, and the shirt as well. And the, the record, record. Has, has great vibes. It, yeah. it emanates great vibes. I'm yeah. behind the tchotchke array yeah. <laughs> here, so I'm, I'm picking up the vibes, I think. Uh, yeah, anyways. Uh, let's uh, roll. Let's hit it. We got the story from the Post Millennial. Breaking, Biden targets President Trump, quote, MAGA extremists in unhinged, angry Valley Forge speech. Before leaving the stage, Biden yelled out, I understand power. Whoa. I just, I just, <laughs> this dude, I'm sorry, man. Joe Biden is just not with it, okay? He, he is old, he is incomprehensible, and the idea that he could hold this position is laughable but of course there are a lot there are a lot of people that want him to have this position to be fair that number is dwindling every single day we had that story yesterday where his volunteers are quitting in droves but let's uh let's start by playing this clip from c-span because you know sometimes i you know, I, I don't know if i would use the word unhinged as liberally as say like the post-millennial would but i have to agree with him at least here because when joe biden says we almost lost our country over January 6th, I'm like, unhinged, absolutely detached from reality. After January 6th, one of the first things I said was, guys, it's not the 1600s anymore. You can't seize control of a government by standing in a building. But Joe Biden apparently thinks it is, because he's probably old enough to remember. But here's the clip. Let's play it. I just visited the grounds of Valley Forge. I've been there a number of times from the time I was a Boy Scout years ago. You know, it's the very site that I think every American should visit. Because it tells a story of the pain and the suffering and the true patriotism it took to make America. Today, we gather in a new year, some 246 years later, just one day before January 6th. A day forever shared in our memory because it was on that day that we nearly lost America. <laughs> lost wow. it all. Today, we're here to answer the most important of questions. Is democracy still America's sacred cause? No. It was never. I, mean, it. I don't think it ever was. This is not rhetorical, academic, or hypothetical. Whether democracy is still America's sacred cause is the most urgent question of our time. He's, he's, he's correct. Is. Well, he's, he's correct. See, the, the parasitic, woke individuals who are trying to displace the American constitutional republic with their multicultural democracy are terrified that those who believe in the constitutional republic and the uh, vision of the founding fathers, they're, they're terrified that uh, we're winning. And so when Joe Biden gets up there and says, our democracy, you need to understand he's not talking about you guys. Because yeah. when, when we sit here and say this country has never been a democracy, he clearly isn't talking to us. During this was really fascinating during the covid lockdowns when you saw Ron DeSantis releasing relieving the, 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 the lockdown pressure when you Christy Nome she didn't lock down South Dakota. Joe Biden made a statement about how we are all doing this thing, how we must do this. We are doing this. And I noticed something really interesting. I said, that's fascinating because the red states aren't doing this. Only the blue states are. So when Joe Biden addresses the nation and says what we are doing, he's explicitly saying, I am not talking to you Republicans. And when he does this, it's the exact same message. It's uh, it's actually a Maoist, uh, or or it harkens back to Maoism. Um, when Mao would talk about 
the the communists he would talk about their democracy and he would talk about uh you know the chinese people and stuff but he was only talking about people that shared his political perspective james Lindsay has a great and i know i bring up james Lindsay a lot but james Lindsay has a great uh podcast on this that goes through one of mao's speeches and actually compares it to one of joe biden's speeches and i will find it and wow. post it on my twitter account should, but it's it's what they do they they constantly like they exclude intentionally with language that sounds inclusive but essentially if you are not thought of as or if you're not in their in group you're thought of as an as not a whole person that's one of the things that mao said if you weren't a communist you didn't have a soul like it, they really looked at it like almost a, a spiritual thing. So um, it, it doesn't surprise me. It doesn't do anything that he said he was going to do when it comes to trying to bring the U.S. together. So reminds yeah, me of like, like when they said, not my president, but like an inversion of that, like not my people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> almost. Yeah. I like when I talk to children in particular, I say what a former government and they say, let's say the pledge of allegiance, pledge of allegiance to the flag, of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. Right there in the Pledge of Allegiance. Mm. And when these liberals come up and say democracy and ignore that we're a republic with constitutional laws and rights, it's as if they think they can just, whatever they feel like, make it the law. Even if it yep. totally tramples your rights as an individual, yeah. your freedoms, and it's not our government. I think that that's a, I think that the, the, attempts to adjust language and meanings of words is actually, or what it boils down to, is an attempt to circumvent the law. Because if they can, convince you that the words contained in a piece of legislation mm -hmm. don't mean what they plainly mean what they plainly what you would plainly right. understand them to mean then the whole meaning of the law changes that's one of the things again uh, that you hear you hear uh, land dedications often and those should be completely and totally uh, off limits because what it does is it plants the seed of illegitimacy of the United States that means that the the land that you're on whoever owns it they acquired it illegitimately that means that the government can take it because you're not protected by the fourth amendment for illegitimately acquired lands and those kind of twisting of meanings is what the left does constantly they've been doing it and if people want to argue and say no right now we are literally in the united states arguing over what a woman is <laughs> they 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 democrats the corporate press they're very good at controlling the, the debate itself and and pulling you away from arguing about what you want into arguing on their terms. So instead of arguing why we should get rid of gun gun control, we're arguing to what degree we accept gun control. And yeah. to be fair, it is uh, Republicans in the past who have been in favor of gun control, too. Yes. But where we are now, the people who claim that we're a democracy are the people who think that they can simply get together. And if there are more of them than you, they can decide to vote and you no longer have rights. That's not how a republic works. A democracy is two wolves and a lamb deciding what's for lunch. A republic <laughs> is a well-armed lamb contesting the vote. That's, uh, I believe, I, I'm probably, uh, par I'm probably not getting it uh, absolutely correctly, but I believe Benjamin Franklin said that. That's the point. The wolves can vote whatever they want. Yeah. You have a right to live. They can't just vote to eat you. Yeah. But the way these people view it is, look, there's, there's a reason why Joe Biden is, it is, it is, it is unambiguous. He is facilitating illegal immigration into this country on a mass scale colluding with human traffickers and he is his administration explicitly smuggling children in the dead of night on these planes and faster and more than ever and it's because their 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 mentality is if you if the population of a country doesn't agree with you import a different one and the other way you say democracy it's mob rule yeah if you have 51 percent of the vote you can take away the rights of the other 49 percent and take the thing like free speech. I never thought, you know, in my last four years in Congress, when Democrats had total control, that they really thought they could throw people off the internet. I mean, when they threw Donald Trump off Twitter, for example, you know, you think if you can throw the president off, do you think the rest of Americans won't be thrown off the social media if the if the left or the owners think it's something you just say something you disagree with? And to think that they can tell us what we can say and what we can even think. And I'm yep. telling you, I've seen it, man, in Congress. I've seen them put that stuff in. The witch hunt investigations or the rule of law has been applied one way for Republicans, another way for Democrats. It is scary. And, and you mentioned, you know, anti-communist. My mother fled a communist country. She was born and raised in Cuba. Oh, okay. Yeah, and she came here when she was 20 to live in freedom, as have many other sure, immigrants yeah. who've come here legally. And to see the left in this country act that way, yeah. that we're not a republic, it's whatever they want they can do to us, it is scary. And it, it, is, it is as scary as your listeners might think, yeah. if not more so, what yeah. I've actually seen. Michael I, Malice makes the excellent point. 
it is it 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 is much much it, it can be much much worse than you think. Yeah. People yeah. don't realize what bad is. Yeah. And so they hear these stories about communism and it's just like the the typical thing you hear about what communist countries do is the light side of how bad it gets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Today, uh, a shout out to the Punk Rock NBA on uh, Twitter. He is a YouTuber. His name's Finn McKinty. He made a uh, uh, you, a video about uh, the breakup of um, Rage Against the Machine, and he was uh, rightly critical of the of the band using communist imagery. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's unacceptable. Uh, it's it's like using Nazi image imagery. Communists killed millions and millions and millions of people. There's a reason why I say every day. That I'm that I'm on the show that I'm an anti-communist <laughs> counter-revolutionary because that's an actual like there are people in the United States Congress that are in the DSA. The DSA constantly tweets supportive messages about Marx. They su tweet supportive messages about Lenin. Like th this is not a joke, mm -hmm. you know. And you bring it up to people. The the they're so quick to say that we have a right wing problem in the United States to the point where the right is almost just the, the concept of the right is synonymous with bad. Mm -hmm. And that's just so detached from reality. You can look at the right and say there are there are bad things that have been done from people on the right or bad ideas that have come from the right. Fine. But to to think that an entire philosophy, because right now on the right is where the enlightenment lives, right? Like. All of your romantic philosophies, like like socialism is a romantic philosophy. It's based in the idea that that you can will things into existence as opposed to reason, you know, like the, like the enlightenment. And the idea that this stuff is acceptable is just that it's, it's so bad for the country and it will cause massive problems. And we're starting to see them. It's bad for the world. Yeah, 100 percent. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's failed everywhere. It's been tried. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why do we need to try it again? Yep. I mean, I'll, I, I, yeah, they're not going to stop trying. I can go on and on about this. Christ. You see that Same meme here, man. That meme where that uh, what was that woman? She's like from Al Jazeera and Plus or whatever, and she says, "You know, just because socialism has been implemented properly doesn't mean we just give up." Yeah. So, sometimes when you you you, you got to break some eggs or whatever, and then oh, someone great. responds with, "Oops, I burned the souffle," and it shows the killing fields or whatever. Yeah. Like, like, dude, <laughs> nobody knows about all these things that happen, and they only know about. Like the right stuff. Mm -hmm. And they don't realize socialism is a road to communism. Mm -hmm. Well, That's the whole I, point. I, I was talking uh, over the holidays with people and everyone's heard of the right wing boogeyman. Joe Biden giving the speech like, oh, my God. And I'm, and I'm talking to people. I'm like, did you know that in 2020, we saw the worst riots this country has seen in five decades? <laughs> it was the left. Did you know that on May 29th, 2020, thousands of far left extremists firebombed the White House, setting fire to a guard post, setting fire to St. John's Church, the historical church across the street? Uh, 70 plus police officers were injured in the scuffle and the president was forced into an emergency bunker. They go, what? <laughs> We've had people on this show. We had Marion Williamson, I asked her. And she's like, I don't know what happened with that. What are you talking about? Mm. It's like, how do you not know what is happening in your backyard? Look, Marion Williamson is a very, very nice lady. And she is more deserving of being president than Joe Biden and any other Democrat <laughs> running for the Democrats. But I got to be honest. If you don't know that the house you are seeking to occupy was firebombed only a couple of years ago, I'm not sure you're fit for the job. I just, I, no, they, it's something you should they, know. They call them mostly peaceful protests when, when they when, do it. When they which were burning down a police station. Yeah, burn down yeah. police station. Which, which you, like young people don't realize it, but I mean, I'm probably your age, you're probably my age. Like back in the 80s, these kinds of, of, of phrases we were familiar with because we would watch show. I watched a bunch of shows about, you know, about Russia, about a lot of stuff about uh, East Germany. There was this this one show about paintball, like these kids that used to play paintball and they got mi mixed up with spies in East Germany. It was super mm. cool. But the point is, like, you would hear how in these co in communist countries and, and in socialist countries, how phrases would be said and everybody was aware that they did not mean what mm. they said. Like the words that they were saying and the meaning behind the words were totally incongruous. incongruous. Well, it's like, uh, it's like what we saw with Vivek Ramaswamy he gets questioned by yeah. that Washington Post woman. And she says, well, you condemn white supremacy. And he's like, I condemn all forms of racial discrimination. And it's because white supremacy to the left means something different right. than what it actually means. They, they, they have their own different language. It's, it's fascinating. They use words to that to them means something but to us means something different on purpose to trick us yeah and to trick the ignorant 
And so when Vivek Ramaswamy gets interviewed by those two women, by that Dasha Burns or whatever her name is, it's one of the most dis like just, yo, that lady needs to be fired. But I understand NBC is not is not a news organization. They're an activist organization. So why would they fire their proselytizers? But this woman, Dasha, is not interviewing a presidential candidate. She's berating someone over her personal, emotional activist cause. And Vivek accurately points out the issue with white supremacy is that they define it as punctuality and like a, a, an hour based work schedule. So is I, I need to understand, is that what you want me to condemn? And she's just interrupting him nonstop. It's fascinating when mm -hmm. Vivek is on the CNN town hall debate stage, they always have to interrupt because they're not journalists. Yeah. They're not here to say, tell me your thoughts on issue. They're here to say, here's what you're supposed to think on issue. Shut your mouth. Yeah. Just like it reminds me of the Trump CNN town hall thing every time. Just like they would ask him stuff and he would give an answer and then they would just she would correct him <laughs> with incorrect stuff. It's just shocking to me. Again, I bring up, you know, people that are that, you know, lived th uh, that were alive when when communist countries were were prevalent when they were like during the Cold War. And it's like, why is it that I know there are people in Congress that are that are old enough to remember? Yeah. Why are they unaware? Why is it that none of the the Republicans in Congress actually will call out the the anyone on the squad and be like, why are you associating with the DSA when the DSA is tweeting Lenin quotes? Why are you associating with them? Why do you caucus with them? Why is that acceptable? Yeah. And and I mean, like the, you guys should. I wish that you guys would do it because this should. You should be absolutely shamed into into a, a cave if you sit there and walk around with your with with a sickle and hammer, or if you're you're quoting Marx. And I mean, not to not to uh, you know go back to the whole like Rage Against the Machine thing, but the guy's got a pedal that has a Lenin quote on it. Like sometimes history needs a push. The push that was a insane. million. It was a hundred million people said? on the. It's a. It's a. Wow. It's a, a foot pedal made by Dunlop. That it's a. It's his wah pedal on the side of it. I got to. I just. Wait, I wait, you could buy that from you, from Dunlop. Yeah, Jim Dunlop. Yeah, Dunlop Company. They have it. It's it's on the side. You of, can you can go to the website buy a pedal uh, that has that quote on it. I will bring up the picture, my friend. Mm -hmm. wow. Yes, you can absolutely. And it says that's wild. It says uh, yeah. The sometimes history needs a push, and that push, like I said, that push is a hundred million dead people. So, right. so, so let's clarify real quick. This is a a guitar pedal yep. available from Dunlop Corporation, mm -hmm. the Dunlop Company. That you can go and buy right now with a Lennon quote on it that says, sometimes history needs a push? Yes. Everyone should email that company asking why they are calling for the genocide Seriously. against Slavic people. Yeah. I can't think of any more clear way to put it than that. I mean... Yeah, let's 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 play the game. Contact yeah. them and say... So this is like the signature... But sometimes history needs a push. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's the, got uh, a communist it's star It's got the red it. star on it, and it's, you know, on the side it says... Cool. Uh, yeah, I just retweeted it. It's on my. It's on the top of my. Yeah, uh, how about how about uh, everybody reach out to Dunlop and ask them why they're selling genocidal, uh, calling for genocide, why they're supporting genocide, and and then see what they say. The, the, this kind of stuff, it, the fact that we accept this as a society sick, is man. is you know, because we have a red washed, red washed educational system. That's that, that's Dunlop, you say, huh? Yeah. What do I got here? Done with Dunlop. Okay, this is a Fender guitar pick. There you go. I will not use Dunlop guitar picks <laughs> anymore. I used to use Tortex. Those were the ones. Yeah. Not anymore. That's Dunlop. Yeah, the the Tortex. The, 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 yeah. the jazz Tortex, jazz, the purple jazz threes. No longer. Yeah. Well, you talk uh, about my age in the history. I mean, I graduated high school in '89, went off to college, and there was a class on the Soviet Union. And part of the theme of the class was how that Soviet Union was there to stay. We have to learn to work with them, and they're never going to go away. Except that it went away that year. They mm -hmm. had to cancel yeah. the class yeah. Yeah. because the Soviet Union fell apart completely. <laughs> because communism doesn't work, socialism doesn't work. Even that guy Joe Biden was head of Foreign Affairs Committee at the time, and was one of the leading proponents of working with the Soviet Union, accepting them as an equal. Don't fight he, them. Oh, really? Was he? Yeah, yeah. Okay. He was him, him and a bunch of lefties were. Hey, we can't fight these guys. I guess they didn't have a problem with them. I don't know, but they were. You know, they had the view that the Soviet Union was a war workable economy and it was powerful and it was fine and we just got to accept them and the republicans didn't believe that i mean some did some didn't but they cr they got crushed and so they fell apart because it doesn't work i don't think they knew so about you don't the need to push anything yet. sorry yeah. i don't think they knew about the gulags yet no nah. who oh uh, back just, when they said that probably yeah well, I, well the countries within there you know poland they were fighting for freedom right and they were they were believing in the right to have property and things and the stuff they'd had before they got taken over by the communists right. and and they underestimated that and frankly threw them under the bus saying that soviet union would never you know dissolve it dissolved 
and it does you know so people didn't think that, yeah people really that, that was kind of the general consensus though like mm-hmm. it was information didn't travel the way that it does now and back then like you didn't think that the soviet union was going to fall the day before it fell which it, it was on the it was just, it, it was mm-hmm. it's on December twenty sixth in case anyone wants to celebrate it with me <laughs> every year I uh, you should I, you should the Berlin I, Wall goes down yeah you know yeah. but uh, it was the end of the Soviet Union but yeah like here people, let's let's ahead. let's show this real quick this is uh I just I just Google searched it there's a website called George's Music mm. I wouldn't recommend anyone contacting just like a small distributor or like a small retail store or whatever but no. here's sometimes history needs a push yeah. and that is the was it the Crybaby Wa Tom yeah, Morello his, pedal. Yeah, yeah. And uh, here you can see from Brainy Quote, Vladimir Lenin, sometimes history needs a push. Mm. So why don't we ask Dunlop why it is that, I mean, that quote is specifically a call for genocide. Yeah. Historically, yeah. it's a call for genocide. Because the, the push is yeah, millions dead. Yeah. The point it's, was yeah. that there are people who are resistant to your, your changes. And if you're on the right side of history, you have to push against them. Right. Take and what was that push? And... They killed a 100 million people in the history of communism. Yep. So, uh, no, no yeah. Dunlop. Yeah, that's pro Bolshevik. No thanks. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's frustrating. Wa. It's frustrating as hell. Um, I mean, I called out, like, I was making a stink about this when, uh, uh, what was his name? Speaker Ryan used a, it talked about Rage Against the Machine. It was like 2012. Oh, okay. When, spe- when Ryan was speaker, I, and I, I called out, uh, you know, I was like, oh, blah, blah, blah. Because he talked about you coming out to Rage Against the Machine or something like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, Coming out to them? What He was walking out. Like he, <laughs> oh, he I thought that. he was gay. I was like, what? <laughs> no. I mean, well, he, Ryan, you know, speak of Ryan, maybe. But either way, um, he... Uh, he was he caught some crap from from uh the guys in rage and i wrote up a uh an op-ed they i think they ran it in ap um but yeah rage on behalf of the machine now yeah i was like you're a commie what are you talking about you know and i was like you you can't sit there and talk talk about republicans being bad when you're a literal literal communist because there's it's no comparison any liberal as much as the the communists online want to you know swear up and down that, that that capitalism actually kills millions of people and blah 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 any liberal should understand that a liberal society is far and away better than a communist society and you should be able to vocally explain why and that's you should be able to do that you should be taught that stuff in school yeah and now we've got you know lgbt studies in school and stuff communism couldn't exist without capitalism exactly in the first place so all it really is is just taking everyone back down till it fails and then everyone has to start over from scratch it's just yeah i mean perpetual marx good no well, no, no. marx knew up. that marx knew that like the way marx looked at it was like there's stages of history and he thought that com like capitalism was going to get so successful and so abundant that it would you'd be able to have socialism and and it would be steps in in uh in history or whatever but we got uh we got more big news we'll segue out of this one from the Independent, Supreme Court will decide if Trump can be kept off 2024 ballots after January 6th insurrection. I love how they just they make an affirmative statement in the headline, despite the fact the headline is literally the Supreme Court will decide if there's actually any question of the insurrection in the 14th Amendment. Because the argument is, if Trump did engage in insurrection, then the 14th Amendment would keep him off. However, well, actually, that's not fair. That's not fair. The 14th Amendment likely uh, uh, doesn't even apply to the president. And we haven't even Trump hasn't even been charged with any kind of insurrection. So we're nowhere near there. But of course, the independent is going to affirmatively state in the headline after it already happened. But anyway, that's why I used this source, because, you know, we, we love our leftist friends. The reality is the Supreme Court has granted cert to Donald Trump. He will go to the Supreme Court and have his argument. The Supreme Court will listen to the argument as to whether or not Trump can be removed from these ballots. This could end the uh, the issue once and for all. So I hope they answer this really, really quickly. I don't know when they're expected to come into session. But, uh, you know, there's a slim chance the Supreme Court comes out and says, actually, yes, Trump did engage in insurrection. And so he's off the ballot and it pulls him off the ballot everywhere. Not really going to happen. But, that, that it, you know, look, the, the, the reason Roe v. Wade got overturned at Supreme Court is because a group, I think it was Mississippi, right, where they filed the lawsuit. Yeah, Mississippi was a you know, league. They sued because Mississippi was set a, a ban on abortion, and right. so they sued, saying, "Hey, you can't do this." And the Supreme Court said, "Not only can they, Roe v. Wade's gone, everybody." Yeah. yeah. So if they just did not challenge it and let Mississippi do what they wanted, Roe v. Wade would still be there. Yeah. They lost it all. So there's a possibility this could backfire, but I really do think Supreme Court's going to side with Trump on this one. 
Yeah, I think it'll backfire. It actually goes back to what Donald. You, you think it'll backfire? I think it'll backfire. Yeah, I think the court. <laughs> I think the court's just going to say you can't do that. You guys are. You guys can't be throwing pre- presidential candidates. No, no, no I meant backfire on Trump. No, Trump. no, no. I think it backfire on the lefties. Right, no, right, yeah, right. No. Backfire in the sense that that uh, the states that are meddling around. I mean, Colorado is not as much of a target state. Maine has the one congressional district that sometimes goes re- goes for Republicans. But it, it goes back to what we're saying about the communists. In this country, we're not communists. Therefore, therefore, we're innocent until proven guilty. People have heard of that. Innocent until proven guilty. President Trump has convic- been convicted of absolutely nothing. He's not been charged. No, he hasn't been charged. That much that's <laughs> convicted. So I, therefore, he's an innocent man under no the one, rule of law. Nobody has been charged with, with insurrection, have they? Okay, conspiracy to well, commit, I think is what they were conspiracy. Okay. Conspiracy, I think it was conspiracy. Okay. I think it was conspiracy to commit it, not actually committing it. Okay. They were clever with that. But but nonetheless, we're talking about President Trump on the ballot. He's convicted of absolutely nothing. And these are people who claim to be for the people. Yeah. Like, really? So if an innocent man, because you're innocent until proven guilty, can be thrown off ballots because you don't like him or because you think he may have done something, I mean, this is this is uh, basically chaos. I well, think what, what, about, a- what about Santos? Yeah, same thing. Same he, thing. He, he's he not been convicted of nothing either. Yeah. yeah. And he got, he got, yeah. ex, that's crazy. Yeah. Infuriating. But Mendez gets to stay with gold bars and his pockets <laughs> yeah. in his, yeah. in, yeah. in his, in his you know, and the Democrat- how has he not been expelled? Um, yeah. <laughs> he, they, 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 didn't yeah. they issue a superseding indictment? I do not know. Like, oh, we got more on this guy. Yeah, there's a lot. Santos has been accused of a lot of things, but he's I, I, my, he's not been convicted of anything. And he gets, yeah. he gets that, that's crazy. He's the guilty only, of being awesome. The only two said. people we ever thrown out before were actually convicted of something. So that's a different standard. But, the, you know, but it's, it, the, the reason that it happened is because he is, because Republicans are stupid <laughs> and because Democrats are crafty. Democrats, Democrats are more than happy to vote with. Of course. Le, le, and I was there voting. Less than half the Republicans voted for that. Interestingly enough, the new Speaker of the House, uh, Mike Johnson, uh, the, the majority leader, Steve Scalise, the majority whip, and the, everyone in leadership voted against removing him, against removing him, as did most Republicans. But the committee reported it out nonetheless, overriding leadership. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, Kevin McCarthy's one who set up the committee. He, he resigned now. But the new speaker, Mike but, Johnson, voted against it. I don't know how Kevin would have, I, you know, I don't And so basically, what was it? What, how many yeah. Republicans ended up voting? It ended up being like 111 voted no to expel him, including me, and about 90 or so voted yes to expel him. So the minority of the Republicans, but every Democrat, I think one abstained, but basically every Democrat was more than happy to throw him out. Everyone, like, yeah. I can't imagine. Yeah. Convicted of nothing. I th- well, they, they, I can't b- believe that that many Republicans voted it, to throw them out. I mean, 105 granted, Republicans voted to expel. It's ridiculous. It? How many let's voted just, against? Uh, uh, let's see. Um, oh, more than 100 right. Republicans joined Democrats to expel Santos, and uh, Newsweek has the mm-hmm. list. Let's, uh, all right, let's grab a name at random. We're going to just we're gonna shuffle it up a little bit. And then Ron Estes of Kansas, you are a scumbag. <laughs> Unlucky guy. Unlucky. Uh oh. Did I see Dan Crenshaw on there? Oh, God, please. Dan no. Crenshaw. Dan. Dan, you're a scumbag. Why on earth would Dan kind of Crenshaw thing. vote for that? I don't know, man. Is there anybody in here? I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I know that I'm going to have to call a scumbag because I will. I will. Let me let me go through. See, if I, see uh, uh, we all, Dan, uh, we almost had him on the show. He's been invited several times, but he canceled on us every time. Uh, he's not a scumbag for that. He's allowed to cancel on us. You don't have to come on the show. Nobody owes me any favors. But voting to expel Santos, who is not convicted of any crime, is pathetic, spineless behavior. Yeah. So, uh... Who's who's I I don't know if I know anybody in here because we like I we're, we're we're we mostly have the Freedom Caucus people in here. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know they they like to say oh Tim Pool's right wing. I was like eh, it's like moderate libertarians on this show. You know what I mean? <laughs> so if it's like Freedom Caucus people, we're usually friends with them and they're usually doing the right thing. We don't got to worry about them. But uh, as for the rest of these people, I don't even know who these guys are. Ken Buck, sorry Ken, you're a scumbag. Andy Barr, scumbag. <laughs> Not, 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 like you can you can apologize after the fact all right but right now i just call you scumbags anyway what were we talking about uh how oh. the republicans are unreliable and they will vote to boot people that are republicans whereas the democrats obviously wouldn't you look at the way that the de- like and granted this isn't in congress but it's still the same ideology the way the democrats are flipping out and and making a massive issue over the firing of uh of president gay from harvard Right. Mm-hmm. They're all swearing up and down that it's it's because of racism when the woman clearly had massive amounts of perjury in her history and she made terribly anti-Semitic comments in front of Congress. That's totally justified to ask her to step down. 
especially considering Harvard has a reputation to worry about. The anti-Semitic comments alone are enough for Harvard to be like, you have made remarks that do not line up with Harvard's values. You need to step down. Mm-hmm. That you, you can disagree, but at least it makes sense. And to allow her to stay and, and sit there mm-hmm. and 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 run her and and you know to 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 not have, take care of the problem and and sit there and, and defend her as if she had done has done nothing wrong and as if it's just based on racism is absolutely insane but that's the way that they behave there is they will not go after their their own and anytime there is a a chink in the republicans armor they're going to go for it i can't wait you know cuz we got uh, we got elections coming up and we get more and more elected officials running for re-election who want to come on shows like this. Well, they're not going to come on this show. <laughs> That's not going to happen. People say to me all the time, like, Tim, you got to be nice. Otherwise, they're not going to want to come on your show. And I'm like, <laughs> good, I don't want them. I mean, look, you got Comer on there. Uh, there. There's absolutely people I'd love to have conversations with. But I'm sorry, man. If you if if uh, I'm going to be I'm going to be a dick about it. I think I think one of the scummiest things you could have done is how, they, they could have waited. They could have been like, okay, we got some evidence. Let's 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 get it documented as this country yeah. is supposed to do to prove that he's guilty, and then get a unanimous vote and be like, you're guilty of this stuff. You get out of here, man. Instead, it's just it's just guilty until proven innocent. At this point, this is a, it's a dark path for this country, and I'm sick and tired of Republicans. You know, you know, you know. I see, and you know what so many Americans see, and I, and I think this is why so many Americans are pro-Trump and voted for Trump in 2016. And I was late to the party. You you know it, but it's a, look at this. Republicans get on their knees for Democrats. The Democrats crack the whip on the Republicans say, yeah, you know, please, may I have another? Remarkable. I will say this. I'd, I'd love to advocate for the impeachment of Joe Biden at this point on principal grounds. But strategically, please don't impeach the man. <laughs> we need we let, let him stay in there so he can yeah. lose. I mean, understand impeachment. You still got to convict in the Senate. So right. Joe okay. Biden well, so in that case, impeach him. Re- right. He would not be removed, <laughs> but he would not be removed from office. And so we can do it then. You could impeach him, but you, they, there's no way he'd be convicted. So what I say to people is, look, we got an election coming up here in November. So you want to get rid of him. That's that's the best effective way to do it. Missouri State Senator B- Bill Eagle sponsored a bill to disqualify Joe Biden from the 2024 ballot. Uh, yeah. Alex posted this. <laughs> Alex posted this uh, at 8:22 p.m. today. Uh, it yeah. says, uh, you know what I, I think? I'd, I'd love to advocate for the impeachment and conviction of Joe Biden. But I think you're right, because we were for a long time like this guy, the Burisma stuff. I mean, the border stuff. I, I think the border, the, the, the facilitation of the of the immigration crisis, yeah. I, he, he's suing Texas now. He's facilitating this. I think you can say this is high crimes and misdemeanors, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But I kind of think if the Republicans impeach Joe Biden thinking, hey, we'll earn some political points, he'll never get convicted. He'll get convicted. Democrats will be like, oh, gee, you know what, Republicans, you're right. Biden's got to go. Good luck. Good luck in November. Because then they bring in Gavin Newsom. And they they would love to get Joe Biden to swap out somehow. Gruesome Newsom, yeah. Gruesome Newsom. We really... couldn't even impeach Mayorkas, who's Homeland Security uh, Secretary, who won't enforce the border. And, you know, he'd be easier to impeach him. We still haven't done that. I so I I hate the fact that they are so in Mm -hmm. unable to do anything like uh, we're going to talk you know we're going to have Vivek Ramaswamy in the uh, uh, next week and he's talking about making major major cuts real substantive Mm -hmm. cuts like I would love to see the government just shrink a little bit never mind you know I mean well actually I would love to see the government stop growing and stop trying to insert itself into you know things that essentially are are personal and stuff Um, but I mean I would I would I would give, you know, just anything to see it just stop growing, you know, just stop first doing first stop doing more harm. Yeah. You know, the, that's <laughs> well, what you, you do. The first thing you better. do is stop the bleeding, right? Yeah. Let's let's pull up this story. We got this tweet from ALX. Missouri State Senator Bill Eigel sponsors a bill to disqualify Joe Biden from the 2024 ballot. <laughs> All right. What's his argument? He says. In the wake of the formal efforts in 33 states to remove President Donald J. Trump from the ballot, State Senator Bill Eigel will be putting forth legislation that would disqualify Biden from the ballot in Missouri, saying the following. By the Democrats' own standard, Joe Biden should be immediately disqualified and removed from the ballot for the aid and comfort he has given to our enemies. Our country is being invaded because Joe Biden has swung our southern border wide open. President Biden has allowed more than 8 million people to stroll across the border illegally, causing more harm to this country than any other president in American history. My legislation exposes the absolute absurdity of Colorado and Maine's decisions to remove President Donald J. Trump from the ballot. If radical leftists continue to push lies and fairy tales in an attempt to kick Trump off the ballot in their states, Republicans have no choice but to buck up and fight back. 
Use the facts to remove Biden from the ballot before he destroys this country even further. Democrats only believe in democracy when it favors them. Let's expose their double standard hypocrisy. We must stand our ground to protect the security of our nation and the sovereignty of our people. Bill Igel is the only Missouri gubernatorial candidate to endorse President Trump in his 2024 re-election big bid. Paid for by Igel for Missouri, Thomas Hughes, treasurer. I agree. But uh, I got to tell you, there is a... Uh, it's a pretty wild scenario when red states pull Biden off the ballot and blue states pull Trump off the ballot, because then it, it, what the election, it's, it seems kind of silly, but what's how, how does this play out when it comes I know, to November? I have an idea. Remember office of the president elect when I just Googled this, they like rolled out this gaslighting oh, yeah, campaign yeah, and, yeah. and now it has an oh, official right. definition. The president elect of the United States is the candidate who has presumptively won the United States presidential election. And is awaiting inauguration to become president. They will just say he's the falsely taken off the ballot president of the United States. And then they'll have like. Well, no, what will happen life. is Democrat corporate press sources will say Biden won. And like, here, here's here's the thing. If every single media outlet in this country declares a presidential victor, that person's the president. End of story. Yeah. Because it's just the it's the it's the it's the it's the confident popular narrative as media bifurcates. If at the end of this year, we see CNN that gets, what, a couple hundred thousand in their ratings and only 80,000 in the key demo, when they come out and they say, Joe Biden wins, and then all the alternative outlets and podcasts are like, no, Trump won, then what happens? So what we need, here's my advice to every single uh, Trump supporter. What you need to do right now is start asking how you get access to the tabulation data the same way CNN does. How does CNN get the numbers reported to them? Get the numbers reported to your, your news outlet, Daily Caller, Daily Wire. How about we watch the Daily Wire for their election tabulations and not Fox News or CNN? Because when it came to calling Arizona, everyone was complaining in 2020 because why did Fox News call it so early? We, we're still awaiting a lot of information and a lot of data. Okay, well, imagine if as all this information's coming in, you have the Daily Wire, Crowder, even Joe Rogan, who knows, all these independent outlets, media outlets, uh, and they all say, it does not look conclusive. We're still awaiting a potential 2 or 3%. We don't know who's going to win this state. Then all the corporate press calls it for Joe Biden. Then a point goes in favor of Trump. So everyone else calls it for Trump. Then what? Then what? Yeah. Uh. Well, I mean, it's going to be, it's gonna be real interesting. Yeah. Joe Biden's going to have 30 million votes. Donald Trump's going to have 30 million votes because they're only going to be on the ballots in the states where the states already support Trump or Biden. Hmm. What's going to be really interesting is if a swing state tries taking Trump off. Now, Maine is the yeah. first step because Maine has uh, Trump won one electoral vote from Maine in 2020. Right. So if they take him off the ballot, well, they did. That's one electoral vote taken from Donald Trump already. Could make a difference. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, Thomas Massey tweeted this already. So I think a, p a potential scenario. He said to these states that are doing this, you realize like we, the House is going to be the group that determines whether or not we accept these these these, these the state uh, tabulations. So I'm curious, uh, Rep. Mooney. Let me let me let me let me. I'm going to be very very careful with this one. Okay. So I'm going to pull up what uh, Massey actually tweeted. Okay. So that we can uh, let's see. Uh, GOP rep warns House has final say over election after states deem Trump ineligible for ballots. Mm. So let's get rid of this little video here. Thomas Massey issued a warning to states moving to keep former President Trump off the ballot, saying Maine, Colorado, and other states that might try to bureaucratically deny ballot access to any Republican nominee mm. should remember the U.S. House of Representatives is the ultimate arbiter of whether to certify electors from those states. Would you vote to certify a state that arbitrarily removed Donald Trump from the ballot? No, I don't see how you could. And that's a good warning that Massey said. Now, we, Republicans would have to maintain control because the Democrats, I think, if they took over Congress, would certainly certify those states and not reject it. So yep. he's presuming with our four seat majority, you know, so, <laughs> but I mean, how I would vote, you know, but if we want to effectively, that's actually a very good warning because we went through this, of course, um, last cycle as well, where the states do have to certify yes or no. So if you take a state who threw somebody off the ballot, the leading candidate for president off the ballot, Without any justification, which would be the case, I don't see how you could vote to certify that state. And I, then I, uh, yeah. neither candidate reaches 270 electoral votes. Well, I mean, his are thrown out. Uh, so, yeah. 
Well, uh, then, then the Congress, then there, there's other provisions in the Constitution where uh, uh, there, there has to be, there's a way to, there's a way to certify them. Um, th another determination, there's a determination that can be made to certify them. So, uh, so see that. let's say that uh, Colorado won't get counted. Mm -hmm. We now have, we have this story from SCNR.com. Illinois voters file petition to remove Trump from 2024 ballot. So Illinois is a potential. Let's say uh, Illinois. Did you say voters? Voters? Yeah. Well, all all of these. It's not. So in Maine, it was actually a petition from uh, from voters, and then the Secretary of State said, "Okay, I I agree," and got rid of it. So let's say Illinois moves to remove Trump, and they do. Yeah, Illinois was going blue. Nobody expected mm -hmm. to go red, but that's 19 electoral votes that Joe Biden loses. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this: If Illinois removes Donald Trump, yeah, but Illinois, come on, we, it's a blue state. It's not going to go red. Yeah. Would you still say you wouldn't you wouldn't vote to certify? I don't think I would, you know. Um, I think I wouldn't. The, but the, I'm not. I'm not in county. Yeah, I think it gets kicked back. In the state, le the secretary of state's the one who gives the gives the you know the certificate, and the state state legislature is supposed to oversee it. State legislators have generally deferred that to the secretary of state, and that was sort of the issue. So I think there's a role for the state legislators here as well. So you know, depending on what state they're going after, if a state legislator legislature wanted to come in and send a a, a group of electors. Uh, if you say the federal government rejects, say we did reject the state's electors, and I think the state legislatures of that state may have the opportunity to send a uh, send electors in, and it could be resolved that way potentially. It, it, this could be wild if uh, if nobody hits two seventy, it goes to a contingent election. Yeah, and then it's House delegations that each get a vote, and, and yeah. Trump would win. Yeah, that's true. If it goes to the House, and then what? What does I mean? Can you imagine? what the cities of the United States yeah. would look like if that's how Trump won. I, I got to be honest. Uh, I don't care what they'd look like. You know why? I mean, they, it's their own fault. They've I don't live there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, they're, and they're, they're Democrat stronghold. So if they tear themselves apart over themselves, like, okay, good luck guys. You yeah. Know? I mean, I'm, I'm worried about the, the swing back. There's already a lot of, a lot of things on the right that I don't like to see. You know, there's a lot of people talking about, uh, you know, christian nationalism and christian prince stuff mm -hmm. like there's there's some some How? there's this dude richard wolf that's that's written a book about you know nationalism and stuff and it's it's kind of ugly look i don't want you know i'm i'm an atheist or well i'm an agnostic and i'm not really interested in living by someone else's religion and like my hope is that we don't have to go far to the other side and that's what, if, what happens when communist or you know when the left gets too powerful the right comes in and they yeah. start shoving boots in people's asses. so we end up with the united states fracturing into two countries this would mean that certain blue areas are occupied and certain red areas are occupied but the uh northernmost areas would become the corporate states of the uniparty <laughs> and the southern states would become the abrahamic kingdom of america i just have such a pro like i was it's so hard to predict, you know, to, to guess what's going to happen anyways. Once you put something like that big into play, like the the idea of the U.S. not having a a clear president or, or you know, consistent civil unrest that's, you know, beyond the stuff that you saw in 2020. I mean, there's a lot of, arg there's a lot of, a lot, I give a lot of credibility to the argument that the international community might say, look, the United States has more nuclear weapons than anyone else. If their government is, you know, is not solid, then we should have the UN or whatever go and, and help support the United States federal government end up with, you know, foreign troops on U.S. soil. And, and I, again, I'm not saying that I'm predicting that, but it's like these things are well within possibility, you know? So, yeah, you guys are gonna love this. I'm gonna pretend like can't hear you. What? I can't hear you, bro. I said, oh, sorry. You guys are gonna love this. I don't know if Tim wants to see this. But what is it? What you're doing on the the map? Oh, <laughs> well, I'm not, what am I? I'm, <laughs> what I'm, not, <laughs> I'm just <laughs> calculating what what's going on here in these United States, based on the polling data that I've received. Oh. We're just gonna go ahead and make our uh, our predictions as to what's gonna happen here in 2024. Just, just been doing this in the background. Just while you guys are talking, I'm <laughs> yeah. just I'm going over the voting data over here, and it's looking pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Bring that bad boy up. Not gonna have any problems at all in the next election, as that turns out. And uh, it's it's looking it's looking good. Uh, Democrats with one, <laughs> Republicans with 537 electoral <laughs> votes. So I, I, that looks like a I guess I would call that a, a slight win <laughs> for Donald Trump, 2024. Mm -hmm. Look at this. This map proves it. You see, you, you, you this map. Yeah. It's a mudslide. <laughs> Proof. There you go. It's uh, it's coming, ladies and gentlemen. States do change over time. California used to be very Republican. Yeah. And you yeah. know why it's not yeah. anymore? Well, because Ronald Reagan signed a mass amnesty bill 
legalizing mm. non-citizens who then engaged in chain migration. And in 1994, after Proposition 187 was 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 uh, signed into uh, mm -hmm. uh, was was ratified or however codified, right. that Passed. would take away access to public goods for non-citizens. Mm. The family members of these non-citizens who became uh, so the, their their children are now in revolt over how their non-citizen family members would lose access to public services. And the protests resulted in a major swing towards the Democrats, which the, uh, California has never recovered from. Mm. So, you know, a lot of people like to point out, well, there, there weren't so many illegal immigrants when Ronald Reagan enacted those reforms. The fascinating thing is, uh, let's say you live in a big house and it's you, let's say you got 10,000 square feet, or let's just say 10 bedrooms, and you share it with one person. And then one day, that one person lets in his buddy. And you say, hey, man, you can't let your friend in here. You can't live here. He's got to pay rent. You're like, oh, come on, man. It's fine if he lives here. He's, like, He's not on the lease. He's on the lease. He's going to get us in trouble. And plus, we paid the security deposit already. Dude, come on. He refuses to kick him out. You guys keep fighting about it. You don't know what to do. The cops are like, we're not getting involved. Eventually, he says, I'll cut a deal with you. You let him live here. I'll do the dishes. And you go, fine. <laughs> then what happens? That dude invites his buddy over. And you go, dude, no, you can't bring your friend in. And they go, two against one, we win. Mm. And now they vote. Nope, we, 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 every, everybody who wants John to stay here, everyone raise their hand. Now two guys vote against you, one guy. And now there's three of them. And then they invite two more of their friends. Mm. And they say five against one, six against one, seven, 12, 13, 14. And that's what happens in California. Mm. I was researching, I was reading on how California turned, turned from red to blue. Mm. It, was, it was not reliably a deep conservative state. It had a Democrat uh, state legislature. It was fairly progressive. But Republicans were fairly dominant until they invited a whole bunch of people in, gave them citizenship, and those people had more ties to external communities than internal communities. Mm -hmm. So when it came to the question of, should we give public goods and services to people who are not citizens, there was a large percentage of the population that was in favor because they had a larger tie to a non-citizen community than a citizen community. And it's fairly obvious. Why is Joe Biden ripping open the southern border? Because in 10 years, the same thing will happen. You invite people in, grant them amnesty, they will vote against you, and they will vote to take your stuff. I'm for immigration. It's got to be legal immigration. Legal immigration yeah. There's got to be, you take a test, you learn about America, you learn about our values, our court systems, and then you adhere to and abide by that and assimilate into American culture, and we welcome you. You should have to want to become an American. Yep. I don't understand. I, that, that's, again, this is something that when, when I was younger, that, that was kind of a given. But now it's like, you know, come to the United States and live in this space, but you don't have to become an American. And that's that uh, that's something I, I don't understand. You should want to mm -hmm. assimilate to the, you know, the, the to the values of the country that you're living in. You can still be whatever, you know, you can still have whatever traditions or whatever. That's one of the great things about the United States is you're free to live yeah. your life however you want. But you just have to allow other people to live and you have to understand that the United States government isn't here to provide for you. Most immigrants are people that come in and want to work hard, yeah, right? Do. You know, but like there are too many that come in and just stay under the radar and then like, to so the chain migration and stuff. So, so the it, it's not even necessarily about chain migration, which is a which is a big issue, and I think we should make that illegal. Uh, people, uh, you can sponsor non citizens to come into this country. It means you are legally responsible for their financial state and their debts for a certain amount of time. So, this is a component of how chain migration happens. Uh, what we're seeing with Chinese birth tourism: a Chinese woman will fly to the United States on like with a with like a multi month visa give birth to a kid who is now a Chinese national and American citizen. When that kid turns 18, he can sponsor his family from China so that they can come and live in the United States legally. And then the, the child assumes the legal responsibility. We should get rid of all that. But the, the issue is actually really, really simple for people to understand what's going on. If your parents are from the United States and their grand and your grandparents are from the United States, your cousins, your brothers, your sisters are from the United States. Maybe you, you're from Chicago and your cousins live in Dubuque, and your grandparents are from Westchester, PA, and they moved to uh, Il you know Illinois and, and were young, and your dad's family is from Utah. When you are thinking of how you can vote to protect your family, your future, your values, your traditions, and everything you believe in, you are worried mostly about the United States. But if you come to the United States as someone seeking a job, we don't need to speculate as to what you do. They make money at their jobs and send that money back to their home country. 
when it comes to do or die, the voting pattern will be to protect their families. The only issue is they're not voting in the interest of Colorado. They're voting in the interest of Honduras. Now, I get it. I got no disdain for somebody who wants to support their family. And I've got no disdain for somebody who wants to live in the United States. The issue is when you have completely unfettered, flooded invasion on the border, 10,000 plus people per day, the system cannot sustain that. And we are going to end up with a massive percentage of the population that will absolutely vote to strip your assets and send them to foreign countries. And that's probably why it's been happening for a long time. So I, you know what I think we need to do? Elect Donald Trump. Largest deportation campaign we've seen for all of the Ill, uh, illegal immigrants and non-citizens. Uh, legal residents, legal immigrants have my utmost respect. And I, I say we give them a hand. We clap for them. You came here. You did it right. You respected us. We respect you. And we want you to have opportunity. And my view is I agree with Vivek. H-1Bs. And, you know, Hannah Claire and I were arguing this the other day. I'm a big fan of H-1Bs. But they have to be legitimate. Meaning if I cannot hire someone in the United States because the, the talent does not exist, then I say, I want to get a visa for this person who's from the UK or from India or from wherever and bring them to the United States. The U.S. then begins stripping away the high value assets and labor force from other countries, strengthening our economy, our industry. At the same time, we should be restricting lower level immigration severely because we've got way too many young people who can't find jobs. If we allow all of these non-citizens, these illegal immigrants to come across the border, and then they say, oh, but, the, they, but, but look, they, they, they need work. They need jobs. Yeah, well, 16-year-old kid who needs a summer job needs a job too. You, you say low-skill labor, we want someone to work in a meat processing plant. Yeah, I got a 16-year-old kid who can do that job and wants to do that job. And he's happy to make 15 bucks an hour doing it. Donald Trump had a raid on several meat processing plants in the South when he was president. It resulted in like 600 deportations. All these liberals are arguing nobody would do these jobs. They had no choice but to bring in illegal immigrants. When journalists went down to the hiring fairs these companies had after, I think the companies should have been shut down by force by the government for breaking the law. But when they go down there, what did they find? A bunch of American citizens applying for jobs. Hmm. And they went and they asked this one guy, why are you applying for a job at this plant? Nobody wants these jobs. He goes, are you kidding? It pays 14 bucks an hour. That's two bucks more an hour than I was getting my other job. Yeah, Americans will take these jobs. The wages will increase. But when I look at this stuff, I'm so pissed off because Joe Biden is in violation of the Constitution and he is aiding and abetting criminal activity. You know what? Let me show you the proof. Someone tweeted this earlier. It's from August 12th, 2021. From the United States Attorney's Office, Southern District of Texas. Young soldiers admit to transporting undocumented citizens. My stars and garters. You mean... If you transport non-citizens, you are breaking the law. I got questions for the Biden administration, but more importantly, let me say this as clearly as I can to each and every one of you Border Patrol officers and law enforcement officials for the federal government who are taking orders from your higher ups telling you to transport non-citizens, illegal immigrants to all those crew of Swift Air private airlines. I will not forget, nor will anyone who's watched this show, nor will any politician we petition. We will never forget that under our laws, you are committing crimes and you think simply because it's ubiquitous, you will get away with it. I assure you, you will not. If you wear a badge and you are instructed to break the law and you break the law, we will not forget. This is from justice.gov 2021. Two military men stationed at Fort Hood have entered guilty pleas to conspiring to transport undocumented aliens within the United States, announced acting U.S. Attorney Jennifer B. Lowry. Now, how is it that three years ago, two and a half years ago, it is a criminal offense to plead guilty to if you're transporting undocumented aliens in this country? But now, how many law enforcement officials, government contractors, and all you employees of Swift Air are doing just this without a care in the world. I hope, I beg, and I pray that when Donald Trump is elected, he arrests each and every one of you because you are breaking the law. And simply because you all did it with your friends doesn't mean you get away with it. When I saw this, I was pissed. I have no problem with any of the quote-unquote destruction 
that Donald Trump is talking about. And in fact, I don't think that Donald Trump will go far enough if he actually does get elected. People forget, even Obama, when he was president, deported hundreds of thousands, if not millions of legal immigrants. Obama mm -hmm. himself yep. enforced that law. He was the this, deporter in chief. The yep. phenomena we're seeing now with Joe Biden, with the poorest border, and, and taking the dollars that taxpayers give to the border security to use it to bring them in. It's, this is it's, actually a new phenomenon, even for Democrats, yeah. even for Obama. And you can you say, oh, I oppose this. They say, oh, you hate, you hate, they attack you, you hate this, you hate that. But Obama did it. Yeah, because he used to understand that if you have taxes, you're asking for a, like taxes from a tax mm -hmm. base. You have to have a closed system. You can't just open up to the world yep. and then give to everybody. You can't. There's no way you're going to be able to foot that bill. It's there, ridiculous. Dave. There was a CBP guy who pulled up in his truck to the razor wire in Texas and saw illegal immigrants trying to enter. And he said, turn around now. He's under investigation. They're putting they're, they're getting him in trouble for it. Mm -hmm. He's doing his job. He's enforcing the law. That's a good man. And the Biden administration expects you to break the law. But I just yeah. I just I, I'm going to read this for you. They say these men face up to 10 years in prison and a possible $250,000 maximum fine. When I was in Chicago over Christmas, we had a shuttle driver bringing us to our, uh, we were connecting to, uh, what, what did we fly back on? We flew on um, American, maybe? I mm -hmm. can't remember. And uh, this shuttle bus driver said that he, they, they also did, uh, they serviced private planes, they, jets. So they got word the Blackhawks were coming. Chicago Blackhawks, ooh, big hockey fans. And the 737 pulls up, full of passengers. They pull their car up, open the, the, the forward cargo uh, on the belly of the plane. Three garbage bags. And they were like, what is this? And they load the garbage bags onto their car. And they were like, they shrug. And then they found out the plane was transporting illegal immigrants into Chicago. Mm. I asked him, I was like, they, he said, they lied to us. They told us it was the Blackhawks. And I said, did they lie to you because you would not have served illegal immigrants had you known that's what they asked you to do and he goes yep mm. so the only way to get these crew members to actually to facilitate these planes is to trick them into doing it because mm. that's a good guy he was telling me i would not have done that if they didn't trick me i say you sir are a victim mm -hmm. they tricked you but all these guys they know what they're doing and i'm i'm just i i, I beg and i pray man i want donald trump to get in i don't think he'll do it because it's it's, it's important to point out trump is not a dictator he never was and he won't be Trump's going to go in there and he's going to say, look, we love our men and women in uniform. We're not going to hold it against them. We're going to go for the leadership. I get so many conservatives in here being like, I'm not going to blame the police for what they did. I'm going to blame the higher ups. And I'm like, oh, no, if it were me, I'd go to each and every in every individual. And I would say, sir, you can put on the chains on your ankles right now. I'll put you in the jumpsuit. You committed this crime. I don't care if if a vision came to you in your sleep of a prophet telling you to commit the crime. I don't care if your mother told you to do it. I don't care if Joe Biden told you to do it. You broke the law. You broke the law. If Joe Biden says go rob a bank, you you robbed a bank. But these people, I'm 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 worried they'll get away with it. And then this is what happens. Are we supposed to forget? Ten years from now, we'll just forget that this happened. I hope not. All right, it's been a good show, everybody. Yeah. That's I mean, what do you do when the president says to do something like that? I mean, is that look? Yeah. I'll give I'll give it the big ask. I don't expect Donald Trump to start locking up all of our law enforcement. We need law enforcement, but these people should have a reckoning of some sort. I think they should get their pensions stripped from them or something like that. What'll really end up happening is I will say something like Donald Trump must arrest anyone who committed the, committed these crimes, and then. Trump will say, well, we're not going to do that too far, but we will do, and then we'll get something out of it. The scary thing is, what if, what it like, I mean, his entire first, you know, first term, the first, for the whole four years, the FBI, or at least half the FBI, was working, actively working against him, subverting the president. Like, it's legitimate to fire all those people. And the idea that it's not legitimate to fire the people that are like, we should charge those people. We should investigate, look for the people that were actually trying to subvert the directives of the commander in chief, the Fed, you know, the director of the of the Justice Department is, you know, the president's the executive. He's in Yo, charge of the whole thing. Human smuggling. God, that's God. what that's what the justice.gov website calls it. Human yeah, smuggling. There, there's been a, uh, I guess, even among some of the least likely to fight colleagues of mine that are Republicans, a push lately to not fund anything unless we get border enforcement and enforce our immigration laws. Because it is, you know, that obvious to the American people. Even some Democrats have been breaking. We've had a few votes where on the spending bills, we said this is contingent upon uh, enforcing immigration laws, which is clearly not happening. And uh, some Democrats have started to vote with us on this. 
So I, I, you know, I, you know, I hear what Tim's saying. Obviously, very passionate. American people see that too. But it isn't just President Biden. Frankly, the the voters gave us a Republican House of Representatives, which has the power of the purse, and we fund this yeah. with your tax dollars. We don't How have a story on right to now do that. that. Yeah, this is a story that we covered quite a bit. We showed this to Marion Williamson, October twentieth, twenty twenty one. More migrant children being flown to New York, but what happens to them after they arrive? You know, I hope that when Donald Trump gets elected, his attorney general will order an investigation who will find the pilots of these planes and put them in prison for 10 years. And I hope the pilots of these planes hear what I'm saying right now. And I hope you know every opportunity I get to speak to people who are seeking these positions, when, they, when I see them, whoever it may turn out to be, I will be saying to them, when you are in the White House, I want to see the people who flew these planes in shackles. I want to see them crying on television after a perp walk saying, I'm so sorry, I was trafficking children into this country illegally. They think because they work for a corporation, they're shielded. I want all of those people to know I will do everything in my power to advocate you spend your life behind bars. I'm so sick of the banality of evil of people who work for these companies who facilitate crimes and think because Joe Biden is president and because the president is corrupt, you will get away with it. You're not just doing your job. You're breaking the law and we're going to enforce the law the way the law was written. I'm just sick of it, man. It's, it's plain as day right in front of us. We've covered these stories so many times. There was, uh, who was it? There was some, some reps from out of Tennessee. The Biden administration was taking illegal immigrants from the border, putting them on planes and flying them at two in the morning to Tennessee. Yeah. Well, if, if that's a crime that two men were pleading guilty to, to, to moving, uh, transporting undocumented aliens, the Biden administration is ordering people to do it. That's too bad for you guys. You're the one. I, I, we got to lock them up. Lock them all up. Uh, there should be massive, massive investigations. Massive amounts of investigations. I the you could I truly believe that you can just have the FBI investigate the federal government and they'd be busy for a decade. <laughs> they'd, they'd, they'd probably never get done because as they investigate, there's going to be more. The FBI, made. the Federal Bureau of Investigation, now means investigating the federal bureaus, <laughs> right? And or then, we could just get rid of them. I mean, look, if you want to get rid of, you know, cabinet level bureaucracies, everyone that watches the show a lot knows how I feel about that. Get them out of there. Fire people. Unemployment. But we never cut it. It's anything. the banality of evil, man. It's these, it's the people who sell their souls to the devil. It's the people who say, well, you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah. yeah, yeah we, I mean, can't, we can't live that way. But not only that, the it's, I mean, part of this does fall on and it doesn't fall on to the, the, the viewers of the show but part of it does fall on to the people of america because right. people don't know anything about the way that our government works so they can't even know what they should be voting right. for or what you know what what makes sense for them to be voting for and i mean i personally feel like people look at voting like praying it's like oh if i go over there and i, I vote for this thing then you know hopefully i'll get it but voting we, never turns out that way we got a super chat Kako says, I'm a major U.S. airline pilot and was furious when I found out we had illegals on our flights. I hear you, but they don't tell us. Good, sir. I am not speaking of you. You, I believe, are a good man. If you're an airline pilot and they tell you routine flight, have a good day, and you are not party to what's going on, then I think the simple thing is we look at the flight manifests. I think uh, law enforcement should ask what happened. Tell us what happened. You say, I'm just an airline pilot. I had no idea what was going on. And we say, all right, man. Thank you so much for helping assist and figuring out who is facilitating this stuff. And that's it. End of story. And then I'm specifically referring to there are private airlines. So I don't, uh, uh, the guy told me in Chicago it was Swift Air. And a lot of people have said it's Swift Air. I don't know if, if that's true. It, it's, it, you know, whatever. But uh, that's what the guy said. Yeah, there's no way a private pilot doesn't know what he's doing. When the, pa the plane is loaded up with nothing but illegal immigrants all carrying those little baggies or whatever. Yeah, you can be like, Guy, I'm not flying this plane. Are you nuts? That's illegal. I, 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 you know, I, I just, I just pulled it up here from justice.gov. Let me just make sure it's very, very clear to each and every one of you, because we got at least one airline pilot here. If you transport undocumented aliens, you can go to prison for up to ten years. So if you are sitting in that pilot seat and you see them boarding your plane 
and they don't have tickets with names on them because that's already been what's reported. Oh boy. If you think you're not going to get in trouble for that, I got a bridge to sell you. You're, you're going to have to get off and be like, I'm not flying a plane with people who, who don't have tickets. This mm -hmm. is illegal. That's pretty insane. Do they go through security and all that stuff? It's hard enough yep. to get on a plane in the first place. They had the, the tickets said no name given and they're all carrying these packets. And there are people. Now, if you're a gate agent, I, I'm sorry, dude. I worked for American Eagle Airlines, which is American Airlines Regional. I loaded planes. Did not work gate. Gate people are the, they're, they're, they take your tickets and they scan them. If someone walks up to you with a ticket and there's no name on it, you should be like, I'm sorry, sir, you can't get on this I plane. I know you could do that. Right. You, 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 you can't. James oh, yeah. O'Keefe tries to fly oh. and he's got four S's on his ticket and he gets pulled aside for a random screening. Hmm. But these illegal immigrants are being trafficked and they have tickets with no names on them. And the gate agents are like, what do I care? I'm getting paid, baby. Well, I hope you get locked up too. Now, and look, I got, uh, look, I'm sorry. I'm going to say this to the pilot. You find out after the fact you're on a plane with, with illegal immigrants and you didn't know. I can respect you did not know. I, I'm, I'm not trying to be unreasonable. The gate agents know for a fact. The gate agents have to let them through. Yeah, all of them should go to jail. What if you find out afterwards? That's like knowledge of a crime after the fact, right? Isn't, do you, you have to report that to somebody? Uh, I don't know that you go to jail because you may have witnessed a crime you're unsure of and didn't report it. Mm. I mean, that'd be, that'd be crazy. Like you see a guy leaving a bank with a burlap bag or whatever. And you're like, well, it's none of my business. And like, you should have reported you're going to jail. And no, oh, come yeah, on. Like, yeah. You don't, you don't know what's going on. So I'm not going to blame in this instance, like a pilot who's sitting in his chair ready to take off. And he gets like, you have this X many passengers and he goes, you got it. And then later on, they're like, they were illegal immigrants. They don't go like, I had no idea. I can respect that. Gate agents all know though. Illegal, illegal immigrant walks up with their packet and their, and their ticket. Yeah, and that's the, and obvious. Gay, I, this is, this is, this is crazy. You and I both know that gate agents are frequently, uh, entirely disinterested in what's going on around them. I mean, they're, they're yes. not, they're not particularly, <clears throat> you know, they're not really paying attention. They're kind of just moving people through like they, they doing don't their jobs. Yeah. You but know. even if they did report it, they reported the person reporting to was the person saying to do it anyway. Right. I mean, they should report it, but the person they're going to, they're going to ignore it, but at least they'll be on record. You think you could go to, it. Right. You think you could go to TSA yeah. and be like, Hey, yeah. you, you know, TSA, blah, blah, blah. And TSA yeah. apparently would be like, Oh, that's fine with us. Yeah. Someone, someone chatted, <clears throat> Tim fell off the fence, but I got to tell you guys, if the sides of the fence are, we enforce our laws or we don't. Yeah. We got big, we got big problems. It is the, the, the fact that we have laws that we do and do not enforce that's a massive problem. Like, if, if you don't know what to expect from the government, that puts everybody in a position where they're constantly anxious about what the government is going to do. And also, that's part of how it was possible for authoritarian regimes. Yeah, I was waiting to, for it to come back to that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. To, to start turning to start turning family members in. And that's again, that's that's what it was. It wasn't just the everyone secret just lies police. to each other because no one actually knows what the truth is anymore. Yep. And then you're just kind of all screwed. And you yeah. hear people talk about a low tr low trust society versus a high trust society. I mean, it's a nightmare living in a low trust society. And our society is is degrading because of things like the government doesn't equally you know, uh, enforce the law. So Ashley St. Clair posted this video, December 19th. And she says, my Delta flight from Phoenix appears to be flying migrants who crossed the border and are being shipped to New York. When I asked a Delta representative, if this was the case, his response was, what does it matter? They're humans too. lock them up. It is, it is, it is insane to me that the gate agents allow people onto the plane with no name. What if one of these planes, we just had, uh, uh, what, was, what was it? We actually have this tweet, I think, from, uh, from Ashley St. Clair. Let's pull up this story. Ashley St. Clair tweeted, Hey, United, on July 29th, the United plane was nearly totaled after a hard landing. Who was flying that aircraft? Was the co-pilot a former flight attendant who was fired and then rehired through United's diversity program despite being on a list to not return to United? Am I correct? This individual failed multiple trainings, including simulator training. Am I also correct that the US, United has covered up this diversity disaster and many others? Was the number two at the Denver Hiring Center also onboarded through DEI? Did she or did she not change fail grades for DEI hires because it makes the numbers look bad? Did the instructor who failed this co-pilot ask corporate why they passed him? Elon Musk responds, if this is true, this puts a lot of lives at risk. 
It is true. My friends, if there are employees of airlines who are allowing people onto planes without giving their names, you thought 9-11 was bad? We knew the names of those guys. Now they're letting hundreds, if not thousands, every day, and they have no idea who they are. And so when I hear something about a plane nearly being totaled to a hard landing, I get freaked out. Am I going to board a plane where there are people on it that did not pass security and we don't know who they are? And then what happens if they hijack the plane? There's no security screen. There's no vetting of these individuals. I had to go. I have TSA pre. So I have to go for a meeting where I give all my information, bring my, my, my ID cards. And then I get to keep my shoes on when I go through security. When I travel, my friends, they got to take their shoes off. These people don't even have to give their names. That's insane. But I think it goes to show you. I, I you know, Marjorie Taylor Greene has talked about national divorce. You do not have a country if laws are being broken en masse to the tune of 10,000 plus every day. And it's not just 10,000 laws. Each of these individuals who illegally cross the border are breaking a multitude of laws. Each of the employees of these airlines, these bus charters and these uh, private charters, every one of those employees are breaking the law, too. At this point, laws are basically not being enforced at all in this country, only selectively against the political opponents of uniparty establishment figures. I don't know how you have an argument that the United States exists. Well, back to the immigration, like for people who don't want to enforce immigration laws, you got to ask the question, should we have any immigration laws at all? If we have any laws, no matter what they are, any laws at all, at some point, if it's broken, will you deport anybody? And, you know, for those who say it's heartless, like the woman said, they're people too, and stuff like that. The, the, the gate attendant who said to the lady, oh, they're people too. Does she believe in enforcing any laws related to immigration or can anyone come here? 500 billion Chinese can arrive tomorrow. Well, they're people too. Let them all in. So it's either you have a law and you enforce it or you don't. And enforcing any law is always uncomfortable. And just to take the immigration away from a second, say a, a man commits a robbery, gets caught, gets sentenced to five years of jail. That main man may have a five-year-old child at home who doesn't want his daddy to go to jail, but daddy broke the law. So therefore, you have to enforce it. Yep. And yes, innocent people that the five-year-old child loses his father for five years because the father robbed the store. That's enforced. So it's not an easier, or uh, comfortable thing to do always to enforce the law. But either we have the rule of law or we don't. Whether you like it or not, whether it's comfortable or not, whether you think it's humane or not, it's, 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 do you believe in actually enforcing laws? Any laws? Well, they don't. They, they, the, they don't. the, the, the yeah. left doesn't. There's a video going viral right now of a man being arrested because he jumped turnstile in uh, the New York Metro. Mm -hmm. And they're all saying, oh my God, why are the police doing this yeah. to this man? And yeah. I'm like, because yeah. he broke the law. Right. And they're like, but why are they being so violent? Because he's resisting arrest and fighting with them. They should let him go. That's ridiculous. No, they should enforce the law. Yeah, there's no law. But they don't want the law enforced. No. Mm -hmm. And if they get their way, these leftists, then you may as well not own land. You may as well not have a job. Mm -hmm. They're going to come into your house. They're going to take whatever they want. And no one's going to enforce the law. That's the world they live in. The, the, I mean, that's the desire. The idea, you know, there are people on the left that think that even owning property is somehow oppressive. So... The, the idea that you own anything is is offensive to them. But when you're talking about like the the way that they they behave when it comes to enforcing the law, like, this is something that I harp on again. There's this guy in the 60s called uh, Herbert Marcuse that wrote up a mm -hmm. paper called the, uh, what was it, the uh, um, uh, Oppressive Tolerance. And mm -hmm. essentially the right. argument he made in the paper was that yeah. if you are on the left, you should forgive whatever people on the left are doing up to and including violence and if you are if you are on the left and you're dealing with someone on the right then they should be silenced they should be uh you know they should be censored yeah. as much as possible yeah. up to and including thought if possible mm, yeah. so you can't have a a society where half the society believes that the other half of the society yeah. shouldn't have the ability to express themselves, to talk. Mm -hmm. yep. Any of their ideas must be shouted mm -hmm. down. And that's this impulse we see constantly on the left. 
And it's something that that is a, a big problem because we've got a society that doesn't even listen to, you know, we've, we, we constantly are, are bickering and we don't hear each other out. And there's been studies that people in the center and on the right know and understand the arguments from the people on the left. The people on the left straight up are so yeah, ob know. obsessed with the ideology. They just think if you yeah. don't think like us, you must be evil. That's why it's exactly. always bigotry, always some kind of some kind of moral failing. So, oh, Fred, anyway, to other somebody else, Frederick Bastiat, you know, the book yeah. legal, legal Plunder, where <laughs> if you go and take somebody's money from and rob it from their house, you're going to jail. But if you pass a set yeah. of laws to create a tax system <laughs> and you take money. 70% of what they yeah. earn, yeah, it's yeah. legal all of a sudden, mm -hmm. right? So, that's mm -hmm. what's called legal plunder. And it seems like a whole other thing is to just not enforce laws that people may not like, selectively speaking, based on situations like mm -hmm. someone. Uh, not paying to go into the metro system, jumping over the metro line, or you know other, and they have this debate in in cities whether you enforce loitering, um, you know smaller like throwing rocks through windows. Some cities broken have just window. broken window. Yeah, they just choose not to enforce those whatsoever, mm -hmm. which obviously leads to greater and worse crimes. Yeah, yeah. the idea that you can allow some crimes to go yeah. un unpunished or whatever just be like oh well this is a crime but we're going to ignore it yeah you can't do that because that degrades the law overall right. like right. you sh there should probably be significantly fewer laws in most major yeah. cities right like the the essentially the government well, can yeah. do whatever they want whenever they want they've got enough laws where yeah. they can just say okay well you you broke this law so we started the interaction and etc cetera, etc cetera. Yeah. That being said, um, it doesn't mean that the government should have interactions with you all the time. Right. You know, they, the, there should be there should be a limit to the um, an amount that the government is going to be involved with you. And it certainly shouldn't be deciding, oh, we're not going to enforce this law for you. But this guy over here, we're going to look mm -hmm. at the guy that Daniel Penny guy that in uh, yeah, yeah. the guy that, that ended up accidentally killing a guy. Um you know, he wasn't the only guy that was trying to stop him, mm -hmm. you know, and there were, there have been other people that have done significantly worse mm -hmm. crimes, you know, that, that aren't being held on $200,000 bond yeah. or whatever, you know? And, and I think that that's, that's the, the, the inconsistency and the insecurity of the population yeah. is the goal because then you're too afraid to break the rules or yeah, even you know. get close to breaking the rules. It's like by any means necessary it becomes yeah. a thing. It's like it's always been by any means necessary, and then it just everything everything that like falls kind of makes sense once you look at it that and realize that's like the underlying message behind it all. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. Gotta have equal enforcement of the law. It's just a yeah. It's thing. like how how little are we asking here? Yeah. You know, and you talk about it, they always call conservatives names like racists and stuff mm. they're the ones selectively enforcing the law yep, we're right. just saying enforce the law the same regardless of any ethnicity race everything just be equal to everyone mm -hmm. that's that's white supremacy <laughs> that's, that's what they call that that's yeah. why vivek doesn't yeah. said he wouldn't condemn it because he knows what they're saying yeah. is color blindness is mm -hmm. white supremacy mm -hmm. Correct. what the woke left want is racial segregation mm -hmm. so that's what they've actually been implementing across the country and then they use these code words to mm -hmm. trick you mm -hmm. and to make you bend the knee Yep. Well, I think it's, I, I find that at least as far as people running for office, there's a great fear of being called a name like a racist or a hater of any particular person or group yeah. of people. And the fear of being called a name uh, is, is no excuse not to do the right thing, like secure the border, you know, yeah. you know, enforce immigration laws. Doesn't mean you don't love everyone. Sure, you can love everyone. I just think we should actually enforce the laws of our country or we have no laws in this country. And those who want lawlessness and selective enforcement are the ones who are actually picking and choosing government picking and choosing winners and losers based on ethnicity and things like that right. yeah. just like they want to pick the winners and losers based on the energy you know yeah. coal let's go after coal and it's got to be all solar paint you know government's picking win winners and losers and abusing their powers all over the place so ashley st Clair is who tweeted i'm in possession of legitimate major airline boarding passes for migrants that quite literally have the name printed as quote no name given incredibly difficult to post these without putting the insiders at risk working on it this will continue to unfold over the coming weeks, but I can confirm these are legitimate boarding passes. Mm. I'm at a loss for words for what I am verifying. Thank you to everybody reaching out. So if you if you guys choose not to believe it, you don't think Ashley St. St. Clair is on the level. I think she is on the level. I, I know her personally, and I think she is very honest, and I don't think she would lie about this. That being said, I look forward to the release of these images. You should be able to in some way release them, but it is true because whoever printed them out, the companies will know who printed them out. It is also true that I will say to Ashley and to those insiders, you must be brave and you need to stop working for a company that is breaking the law yeah. and blow the whistle 
before you are the one who ends up in prison. You know, we need more everyday American heroes like that in, in this country. We've got a woman in Hardy County, West Virginia, who the EPA declared a trickle of water was a river and was requiring her farm to go over all sorts of EPA regulations. This is when I first elected. And she sued with the support of the American Farm Bureau, sued all the way to the Supreme Court and won, won the case. They offered her settlements along the way, but she said, no, I'm not going to settle because this isn't just for me and my farm. It's for all farmers. And everyday American heroes uh, c- can do this and need to stand up. Uh, and I would applaud anybody that would under a variety of circumstances, you know, whistleblowers who undercover corruption and show what's actually happening. Because there's a lot of misinformation, a lot of hiding what's happening. But the left wants to do things and not let you know, do it in secret. Now, the saying in politics, sunlight is the best disinfectant. Yeah. And I love that saying. And, you know, we have, of course, control in the House now. And I do applaud my good friends, Jim Jordan and James Comer, who run those committees for bringing out whistleblowers who are talking about corruption and covered up evidence from the left and the unfair application of the law. This is important for our country uh, that, that they whistleblow that. And I think, you know, showing that makes a difference and you can lead to the investigations. We do have subpoena power now in the House and, you know, what they've arrested Republicans for now, you know, Hunter Biden won't won't come testify. So you you have double equal on on equal application of the law there as far as committee hearings. So uh, we really have to expose this stuff. And I think that's one of the things this show is about. And I appreciate that. Well, so uh, let's just jump in a little bit before we go to Super Chats. Uh, What what are your plans? What do you got coming uh, coming up? You got some bells in front of you. What, oh, what you I just brought stuff in case you wanted to ask. You know, we we uh, you talk about the wokeism stuff. Well, let's go back to immigration. Right now, Mexico receives sixty million dollars a year in economic development funds just for you know build some uh, build some buildings from American taxpayers. Meanwhile, there's a porous border. Fentanyl's coming across that border. The president of Mexico, who's an out and out socialist and does not hates America, has said, oh, we don't even we don't even do that here. We, that's an American problem. You guys get yourselves under control, insulted our country. Yet we give them 60 million dollars a year of taxpayer dollars. So I have a bill, House Resolution 3190, introduced by me, Congressman Alex Mooney, that says you get no economic development funds, in Mexico, until you certify you're not sending fentanyl across the country. Wow. Across the, that's just, you know, one thing that not going to solve the whole immigration crisis. But think of the stupidity and the craziness of giving a country free tax dollars that's harming us in that way here's a quick question yeah where does that number come from house resolution 3190 You're like how does it how does a resolution get a number uh it's in order when you put it in so, oh, okay so you know the is, house resolution, you start at number one every year yeah starts at one every year yeah oh wow house resolution one two three four five actually i had a house does, resolution does, five does everybody race to get number one well, the leadership controls that, so the Speaker of the House, <laughs> the Speaker of the House is going to decide. Always what, gets number what, one. Yeah, one through ten, I think, is pretty much. Uh, and it's always know. like the Speaker of the House yeah. is cool. Whatever you know, well, yeah, it's based on an issue that's important to American people, like what yeah. we campaigned on. Uh, House Resolution Five is called the Parents' Bill of Rights Act. All it says is what they're teaching your kids in school. Parents have a right to know. It Uh-oh. doesn't reform the whole system. It just says. Some school systems, believe it or not, in this country want to not let the parents know what they're being taught in the schools. Montgomery County, Maryland was trying to do that. And if, uh, the guy who ran for governor of Virginia, McCullough, said parents should have no say in what's going on in their, in their schools. So that just says right to know. You'd think it'd be an easy one. We did pass that one in the House, by the way. The Senate hasn't passed it. So as far as the numbers go, yeah, they're just, once you get past the first 10 or so, it's just when you put it in, it gets randomly assigned. Thousands of bills are put in every year. But yeah. I mean, we have to go through all these, but I know we haven't talked about digital currencies. The White House is actually working on a federal digital currency program, like a national Biden run digital currency program, which we've never authorized. That's something Congress has to authorize. They are so paranoid about Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, all that, because they can't control it. They can't control the American people if they have their own monetary monetary currencies. It totally freaks them out. I mean, I've not seen the Democrats and the left as freaked out since about anything since cryptocurrency came yeah. along. So anyway, my bill bans that because Joe Biden shouldn't even have a pilot program. We've not authorized a pilot program. We don't want America. We don't want your federal government controlling the currency and cryptocurrency and tracking all your purchases, gun purchases. You know, heck, in China they have good. Good, uh, good boy, bad boy credits, you know, for what kind of a citizen you are based on what the government yep. tracks in your purchases. So anyway, I just brought to some of this stuff in case it came up. What about banning uh, 
the implement implementation of social credit score systems. Yeah. Well, we we don't we haven't gotten there yet, but that's kind of where they're going. They even have a, one of my bills is a merchant category code that separate separately identifies firearm merchants or ammunition merchants and for other purposes. So you swipe your card when you buy some ammo. You want somebody keeping track of that? That's that's the type of stuff Biden is trying to push right now through the Department of Treasury. So we need to stop that. So we yeah. don't even get to the you know the ban on you know passing a ban on the good citizen credits. We just don't allow them to even keep track of that information. I mean, people are being freaked out by the by the information. Uh, investment companies are being asked to tell how much of your investment goes to coal and oil and gas. Yeah. Just give me the information. That's, that's all. Well, that, why are they asking for that information? I mean, there's a reason they're asking for that information. They're, they want to do something with it eventually, and that's you get to the credits or the oppression. Yeah. And it, we have to stop that stuff and it tracks before it even gets gets further. And that's something I'm, you know, I need my colleagues to to be supportive of do you feel like people are aware of that and and i like someone like obviously like elizabeth warren she's for total control, total control. On the, of the yeah. you know financial markets mm. and stuff like that i understand that but do you feel like you have um do you feel like you have support from other other people aside from the freedom caucus <laughs> do you feel because i don't feel like the republicans are on the same on yeah. are all on the same team and i don't think that there are republicans that actually Maybe they maybe if they do understand things like cryptocurrency and stuff mm -hmm. like that, I don't think that they see the danger. I think that they're I mean, I, yeah. I a lot of it, I feel like you're dealing with boomers that have no idea and it doesn't make any sense to them because I'm fairly technically savvy. And it took me a minute yeah. to understand exactly the ramifications of something like like the, net, the Bitcoin network and, and yeah. the possibilities and stuff. How do you feel about yeah. the uh, response you get from other people when you talk about things like social credit yeah. system? That means that yeah. you couldn't leave your house yeah. and stuff. That unites Republicans, I'd say. I mean, even some Democrats may be with us on that. But say for the four years I was on the Financial Services Committee, I'm on it now. Jeb Hensley was chairman. When it came to the Democrats crying, screaming to regulate cryptocurrencies, and they were, every hearing they were yelling about it, we did absolutely nothing. No bills, nothing. We didn't have hearings on it. We just let the free market go. And let, let if that's what people want to do, let them do it. And it and it actually thrived for a period of time. Yeah. The first time they got to regulate the cryptocurrency market was on the first COVID bailout bill, one of these stupid, ridiculous, big omnibus, two yep. two trillion. And in there they slipped in the first ever regulation of cryptocurrency. And now they're coming after people and they're trying to and all they're gonna end up doing is sending it overseas. Yeah. They, yeah. they're just gonna do it in some other country. You you can't yeah. That's not something you can lock down. It's yeah. the way that cryptocurrency works, you can't. Yeah, it just doesn't have the. They don't the, have the ability. The, the desire for control. Yeah, and, and that's what this is all about. Do you have a right to make your own decision, or does government make that decision for you? Even if it's a bad decision, mm -hmm. what you eat, you know, what you eat, what you, you know, whether you have a donut, you know, what what you buy, where you go, you might make what kind of health care you may or may not want. Whether you even want health care, you have do you have the freedom to choose to not have health care, or does the government make you have health care? And there's the view among the left, which is mostly the Democrat Party these days. They can decide for you. They'll make the decision for you. And that's that's true. And th this is why cryptocurrencies freaks them out. They lose con total control. People can buy and trade on their own, and the government doesn't even know what's going on. Do you have any – and this is a different subject. Um, do you have an opinion on – or do you have an idea – are you even aware of it? But the, I am, have concerns about um, – company like the, the big tech companies obviously they they track yeah. your data and i don't think that they can do anything about it because everything that happens in a computer there's a law yeah. it just automatically happens right like maybe oh. they don't need to track the keystrokes on on yeah. your particular device but everything that happens in in a computer there's a log like yeah. that's what happens i get it but that means that all of that information is saved and it's also subpoenaable yeah and so James Lindsay, again, has, has talked about your data should be your own mm -hmm. and it shouldn't be something that the the yeah. big data companies are just scraping all the data they can and then yeah. profiting off of it. I think that I don't know how you would do it, but I, I have a problem with the federal government basically having everything you do yeah. – at, at their at their fingertips, all they need to do yeah. is go and and talk to the company to get yeah. it because because it, to me it seems like it's a, they're just another another branch of the military industrial yeah. co complex it, or or uh, an arm of the CIA but logged in you know in yeah. everyone's home. I think it's pretty scary that they collect all that data. It yeah. really is, and we shouldn't allow it. The debate we had in committee specifically is say you join I don't know, any kind of company uh, email system. And or your purchase, you go to any uh, department store and you start purchasing stuff. Now, the, the debate is whether they have to ask you to opt in to collect your data or you have to ask to opt out. And I would say 
my strong view is you have to choose to opt in. It is a free country. If you want yeah. to be able to collect your data, tell them, yeah, here, I want you to go and collect my data, give it to other people that sell stuff and send me emails and give me phone yeah. calls. You opt in. But they take it, for them to take it, and you then have to go find a way to opt out. Right. It's like having an email, a bunch of email things you keep getting, and you can't even find how to unsubscribe. Right. You never subscribe in the first right. place. I right. feel like all I'm ever doing is unsubscribing. Dude, I just yeah, have emails. like 30,000 yeah. emails just collecting. And <laughs> I just did five unsubscribes yesterday to see if I could clear nice. it out. Right. But that's the debate. And, and many Republicans, uh, unfortunately, I disagree strongly, feel that you should have to be required to opt out, that private companies should be able to collect it unless you tell them otherwise. And so uh, that that is the debate we have, and you know I think we need to win that debate. The other debate is even when the internet was created in the 1990s, when it was brand spanking new. And you say we're the same age. I'm not sure. I think I'm a little older than you. A couple but years, not I did years. not have a cell phone in college. I have three. I have three children, and you know, and it's hard for people to understand that. I didn't actually have a cell phone until I was like in my late twenties. I had a beeper. <laughs> How was life? I didn't have that. I did. I didn't. You know, didn't have any of that stuff. We're, we're bringing beepers back. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because no one here at Timcast answers their phones. Good. <laughs> uh, and so it's just like, okay, I'm going to have to get beepers for everybody that mm. beep. Yeah. And only I will have the number. Nice. And if it beeps, it's me. What if those were playing all along? We were just trying to get beepers back. <laughs> <laughs> Bring beepers yeah. back. Yo, beepers were great, weren't they? Remember remember back in the beeper days? Yeah. They were wow. cool. That'd be we had, like a blue, like the transparent blue ones. Yeah. The really cool ones. Mine That's so green. crazy. What was that? was that? Was that on the IDEN network? Like, <laughs> oh, the doctors. I thought it was a doctor only thing. Yeah. But you no, know what no. I'd like to say, what I jokingly say when Al Gore invented the internet in 1990s, yeah. uh, he, we had actually indemnified, you know, the Facebooks, all the internet providers from lawsuits. Mm -hmm. If they censored your data said something about you on the internet was completely untrue, which frankly happened happened to me. Um, and there's no responsibility at all whatsoever. Whereas if you say that to the newspapers, like you remember the Colby Covington kid who didn't went to the pro life march, the Washington Covington po Catholic kid. Co Co Not Colby Co Covington. I Colby Covington. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we like Colby I, though. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a fan. Um, yes, Covington Catholic. That's funny. Yeah, Covington Catholic kid who went to the pro life march and yeah. then was basically harassed by a by a protester in the Washington Post. Uh, uh, falsely state that it stated that he had harassed a gentleman. Yep. The video came out, proved def definitively that this young man that did absolutely wrong was was really the victim of that whole thing. He got a big settlement on the Washington Post. I don't know the number, but he was, Washington Post had to pay him millions of dollars because he sued successfully for being smeared and lied about. You cannot do that to Facebook or the internet. You can't do it. They've been right. indemnified by law. And I don't usually find myself on the same side of trial lawyers here or anything like that. Hmm. But... I think it's high time we take away that, that indemnification from social media companies to just totally lie about you or censor you. Yeah, I, I think it's I think the way the standard should be they do not editorialize their rules and then they're indemnified. Mm -hmm. But if they editorialize their rules, yeah. you get no protection. So yeah. uh Facebook, YouTube, all the like you let's use YouTube as an example, because this was it was true for Twitter, but now that Elon's taken over, it's not as true. Uh Section 230 was supposed to be like, we get it. Yeah, Section 230, you, yeah. You're going to get a bunch of weird crap, and you can you can get rid of that stuff. Right. Abuse pictures, crime, mm -hmm. all that stuff. You will not lose your liability protection for reasonably moderating objectionable material. Right. They then went, really? Mm -hmm. I think hate speech is objectionable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they interpreted it that way. The law needs to be clarified. You cannot set editorial rules like Twitter had a rule that if you misgender someone, you get banned. Mm -hmm. It's like, absolutely, you are now disqualified from identif identification mm -hmm. if you choose to prop up certain accounts. So this was really interesting during the there were hearings in, in Congress over um, with Jack Dorsey. And I forget which rep it was. They pointed out that if you live in this area in the D.C. metro and you log into Twitter as a you sign up as a new user, Twitter by default suggests you follow Democrats. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Jeez. I mean, and that's a threads. huge problem. Yeah. So if they do that, yeah. it's totally fine you do, but yeah. you are liable for everything said on your platform. Mm. All right, we're going to go to Super Chat. So if you haven't already, would you kindly smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends, and head over to TimCast.com. Click join us because this show is made possible thanks in part to viewers like you. When you become a member at TimCast.com, you enable us to do really awesome things. For instance, we will be flying next week to Iowa for the caucuses, not only well, we have special coverage of the caucuses on the 15th with a rotating selection of guests of various different political campaign support. We're doing a town hall with Vivek Ramaswamy. I say town hall, but like we're a podcast. So we're going to we're going to make it a podcast kind of town hall sold out instantly. 50 tickets, very intimate. People are going to be hanging out. It's going to be awesome. And uh, we're doing that on the 10th. We we're not going to make money from doing this. 
Like, let me just, I want to make sure it's very transparent. Timcast makes money. We sell memberships, timcast.com. You can watch the Uncensored show. You can join the Discord. We make money because of that. Someone signs up. They give us 10 bucks a month or more. You can sign up at higher levels for, for different benefits. There's the Elite Club, for instance. We do make money from that. Us choosing to go to Iowa will cost us $100,000. We will lose that money. What is the benefit? I think it's good for the overall uh, company. And the goal is simply this. One, we want to do it. We want to be there on the ground in Iowa during these caucuses. We want to meet the various supporters of these campaigns and do a town hall with Vivek Ramaswamy. We want to counter the debates on CNN and, you know, create a space for truth tellers. I think Vivek is one of those guys. And that means it's going to it's going to cost money to do. The reality is, from a business perspective, if we keep doing things like that, we create more incentive for people to become members. So to put it simply, what do you buy? When you buy a Timcast membership, you get uncensored members only shows. You get our documentaries. We got a couple. We're making more. You get our other shows that are fun and silly. You get access to the members only discord to hang out. And that money goes towards investing in culture, covering the caucuses and making this show better and better as, 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 as much as we can with your assistance. So consider it. Let's read your super chats. Wrath with the first super chat. He says first. Congratulations, sir. You've won the night. Nice. Patrick C says, I hope Trump doesn't show any mercy at this point when he gets back in. I'm done with these people. I can't stand it. Hmm. Here, here. Patrick, I'm sure you've heard you heard my rant earlier in the show. Very passionate, I think, is what uh, the, the representative here called yes. it. Passionate. passionate. Yeah, I'm just pissed. You just call whatever. <laughs> Raymond G. Stanley Jr. says, Biden says he doesn't foster fear while also saying that Trump and MAGA are holding a knife to the throat of their democracy. Remember, remember the 5th of November, for that will be the day of their reckoning. Isn't it amazing? It's going to be November 5th. 5th. Coming up. I mean, that's uh, it's a British thing. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we'll take it, too. Mm-hmm. Everybody's going to show up with Trump masks on. And they're going <laughs> to cheer and <laughs> celebrate Trump's uh, victory. All right. Kicks a kicks. Is that how you say it? Tim, is your Kiki Jiki deck just RDW or is something else entirely? Please. Would you go over a couple of your favorite interactions the deck uses? Unfortunately, I will say, yo, it's been so long since I've played Commander. It's been like a year. I think the last time Ian and I played was maybe like eight or nine months ago. Um, so I can barely remember what's in my Kiki Jiki deck. Yeah, I don't know. I'll have to go and check it out. I can tell you, though, my Kiki Jiki deck, I'm going to brag here. Anybody who doesn't get, understand what, about, what, about, what I'm about to say, good. <laughs> the Kiki Jiki deck is gilded. The, the sleeves for the cards are gold. Every card that exists in a foil iteration is foil. And every other card that exists is an original print. So uh, I've got like alpha and beta cards in there. It is the deck itself could be made. It's, it's an expensive deck, but I think my version of it probably costs like $10,000. It is like my prized Magic the Gathering deck. I've been playing Magic since I was a kid. I'm very proud that I was able to build this deck. And I made sure it was the best it could possibly be. That is the one luxury thing that I've ever bought. Like everything else is kind of just like more practical or an investment. This one was like, I really wanted a premium Magic the Gathering deck. And I will be proud of that purchase. All right, we'll uh, we'll carry on. I also have a bunch of other decks. Let's see, what do we got? Neglectful Sausage says, Bill Clinton likes him young. Who doesn't? We don't need old bruised Love. fruit. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> we like the ones that just turned ripe and juicy. Ladies, take note. Yes, but when Epstein says oh young, there's a different implication <laughs> as to what young means. Look, I mean, nobody wants to eat. Uh, nobody, nobody wants to eat unripe fruit. You get it? Oh, yeah. dude. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Oh, Wait, like, man, dude. like, I don't want to get too, like, not, you know, I'm not even. No, gonna... what are you going to say? <laughs> no, just like, yeah. no, like, no. <laughs> y- <laughs> young girls are not Come as on. much fun as girls that are like late twenties. Well, so I they, like it when sex looks like jujitsu. <laughs> like you're going at it like with someone, not like you, like the whole like teaching thing or young girls. That's 22. Like a, that's, that's for, I mean, I understand the look thing, but the, the, like the, the, the scientific data shows that the the average age of male uh, pre- uh, uh, preference is 22. And the scary thing is, I find this to be gross, it would be younger, but God. men don't like immature women. No. 
So it ends up skewing towards between like 22 and, tw and 26. That's why some people say 24. But what they found was that men, when they send messages on, on dating apps, 22 gets 22 year old women get more messages than anybody else. Yeah. Hmm. And when they look at like a guy's profile, they see that 22 has even at, at the individual level. But the creepy thing was there were studies done where they showed images of teenage girls and up to like older women two men and asked them to rate them on their beauty and sexual attractiveness. The men did not know the ages or anything about the women and the 14 year old girl scored the highest. Good grief. And people need to understand this because this is why modeling agencies use 14 year old girls yeah. for heroin chic. It's, it's right. disgusting in my opinion yeah. Yeah. when people, I, I knew this because I've known about the modeling industry because I have uh, friends and family who yeah. are signed to major labels like, or, right. or major, major Same. agencies. And they'd be like, you know, when you walk through the mall and you see like the Victoria's Secret thing, I shouldn't call it Victoria's Secret because I don't know what their policy is. They, 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 they may use, you know, of age women. But like you go to the mall and you'll see like a lingerie or like a racy photo. Yeah. Those girls are like 15, 16 years old. That yeah. shouldn't even be allowed. It shouldn't be nope. allowed. Absolutely. Modeling agencies should not be able yeah. to do racy uh, modeling for of yeah. young girls. 18. But they, yeah, it should be 18. But they do though. And a lot of people don't, don't know this. I didn't know that. Yep. Then, Some of them, like most, like most well-known or most used models, mm. they're, they're like 15, 16. Mm. Now don't get me wrong. There are a lot of models who are prominent who are in their twenties too. I'm not saying they're not, but I think people need to realize that they, if, if, if you're walking through the mall and you see an advertisement mm. and it's this, you know, they'll, they'll, I'll give you an example. It'll be like a woman. She'll be, to, she'll be topless, but her arms will be covering her nipples and she'll be making like a seductive face and it'll be like a perfume. Yeah. She's like 16. Oh my God. Yep. Messed up. Huh? Yeah, it's true. All right, we'll read some more. We'll read some more. Thank God. Ethan Helms says, <laughs> Megyn Kelly said, don't be surprised if we eventually hear from Epstein himself. Y'all see that? What? Did she say <laughs> <What>? that? <laughs> when was that? How was that? What? She got a Ouija board. I mean, does she really? Of course she thinks he's alive. A recording. There's a recording out somewhere, maybe. Something like that. Oh, yeah, okay. but there are a lot of people who think he's still alive. Gotcha. Yeah. I don't know yeah. about it. Whatever, uh, man. How else should they get that. him out? Oh. The Ouija board's still funny. Yeah. <laughs> the trooper says, hey, Tim, can you adjust your shirt again and say, I get no respect at all, I tell you. I, I, <laughs> I don't understand. I what is that? What what Rodney that Dangerfield, man. I, I don't, I don't get I get no respect bit. at all, I tell you. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Of course oh. I get Rodney Dangerfield. God, I love oh, Rodney, Rodney Dangerfield. Dangerfield. It's fascinating. He got famous when he was like 50. Yeah, yeah. His whole, oh, yeah. His, yeah his, he was he was yeah. doing comedy, it didn't work, and then finally he got down on himself and started making fun of himself, and everyone loved it. <laughs> yep. And he was like, self-deprecating yeah. humor yeah. was amazing. Yeah, it's, like the and place. It, it's victimless. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, he doesn't make fun of anybody yeah. but himself. Yep. And it made him rich and famous. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. It worked. Yeah, you ever you guys ever see um what, what was that movie called? It was called like Back to School or something. Yeah, 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 Back yeah. To School. <laughs> diving board thing. Oh, that oh, that was God. so great. Uh, I have not seen that movie since I was a real little kid, but the most memorable moment of the movie for me is when he's arguing with the professor because the professor doesn't actually know how to run a business because he's in, he's in university. And then all the students take notes from him because wow. he's this industry yeah. leader. <laughs> yeah, good movie. Imagine that. Max Reddick says, Tim, you got to get Destiny back on. Would be a great conversation about Biden's corruption, J6, etc. He certainly feels differently than you do. Uh, I like Destiny. He's a good dude. We, he like is. he's he's been on the show several times. He's been on various forms of it, and we like we 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 play poker with him after the fact. Destiny is a sincere guy. He believes what he believes, and he's not he's he's not is no grift no grift. Yeah, he uh, sure. I disagree with him, I but I think he's a good dude. Uh, so we 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 enjoy having him on to hear those perspectives. And the reality is, like I think for the bulk of things, we we agree with him. <laughs> and then when it comes to stuff like this, we disagree. But I have tremendous respect for him because. We were arguing about something like the first time he came on the show and I said something to the effect of all they're doing is lying, exploiting a crisis to implement their policy changes. And he said something like, well, when else would you do it? And, I, and then I kind of had this realization like, oh, he's being honest that he wants this stuff done. I can respect that. If you tell me you think policy should be changed in ways that that bypasses the vote of the people or like you don't think we should. I, I, I want to be careful. I want to drag the guy or get his position wrong. But if your view is we should implement radical change during a crisis because it's 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 better and there are smart people who know how to do it, as long as you're not lying to me, because this is what they do. Like yeah. you, you're, I think you mentioned this before the show. I don't know if it was during the show. You said everything the Democrats try to do is the opposite. Has the opposite effect. 
It has the opposite effect. Yeah. That's what I can't stand. Yeah. If they came to me and said, "You look, we really hate homeless people, so we're going to yeah. implement these policies that actually hurt them," I'd right. say, "Well, okay, I, I I disagree with you." Right. But when you come to me and say, "No, no, we're going to help them. We're, help we're helping." Them. Yes. And then you burn everything down. I'm like, "You're yeah. lying." Yeah. So. But I think the saying that we say in Congress, what the left does, never let a crisis go to waste. Every time something happens, somebody uses a gun inappropriately, let's go ban certain guns. Yep. Uh, COVID, you know, COVID, oh, let's go take your freedoms away. Let's just shut down things and, you know. Are you, uh, are you a big gun guy? Or are you oh, like- Yeah, of course. Yeah, no, definitely. So I was, uh, I was hanging at a gun store. I went to Alaska. And uh, basically every store in Alaska, when you're not in the big city, is a gun store too. Because <laughs> yeah. if you're in the middle of nowhere yeah. and you're going to a general goods store, they've got guns and bullets yeah. or, or something. I, you know, maybe I'm not speaking, maybe, maybe Alaskans know better. All I know is I went to a store that sold chocolate bars and they also had guns. <laughs> That's cool. And it made yeah. sense though, because it was a town of only a few hundred people. Right. And so you, you're living out here, you need yeah. your weapons. Yep. But anyway, we're hanging out. And then uh, I was just sort of passively talking about this. Because the guys who were with us, one guy was from Montana, and I had to explain to them that in Maryland, M1, the M1A is, is an assault weapon. It has been banned mm -hmm. explicitly and specifically as an yeah. assault weapon, but the SCAR-20S yeah. is legal. Now, for yeah. those that don't know anything about guns, yeah. an M1A, it's like, okay, there's different variants or whatever, I suppose, but it's, it's, it's uh, it, well, it's semi-auto, semi but it's like a Woodstock- uh, Right, uh, the way it looks. A 308 or, or 55 uh, no no seven uh, seven mm -hmm. uh, six two the scar 20s is a modern like ar-15 style 308 mm -hmm. this the, the really simple way to break this down is scar 20s modern better better handling better weight everything about it is better better accessories more adaptable more mod mod modifiable totally legal and fine <laughs> m1a which is reminiscent of like what they used in vietnam or whatever banned as an assault weapon there is absolutely no logic whatsoever behind yeah. this. Yeah. It was weapon of war, scary, ban it. Yeah. But what about a SCAR 20S? They go, I don't know what that is. No, yeah. And then we all just go, like, don't tell them. <laughs> they want to ban the ones with scary names or that look scary. There's yeah. no logic to it. You know, 10 rounds of ammunition, 12, 15. I, I love the KSG 25. <laughs> totally fine and legal mm -hmm. in, in Maryland. You, you know what that is? Do you guys know what that is? I know. It is a double mag tube, 25 shell pump action shotgun. What? <laughs> and wow. it's awesome. <laughs> and so when we went to the range with it, yeah. it's we, we, we've got 20, 25 rounds of buckshot. And it's just boom, <laughs> boom, boom, boom. It vaporized the wood, yeah. the wood structure of the target. Totally fine. That'd be and good it for, should be fine. Yeah. But an M1A, no, not allowed. I'm looking at them both. I don't know if you all have ever played Call of Duty, but it's like the, the weapon you start out with is an M1 Grand and it sucks. And then yeah, you have to build it. your way up to the Browning, which is like the one that you get out of the mystery box. It's got the things that come down. It's fully automatic. What is the ground, the ground thumb? Oh, yeah, because yeah. people would be is, from the little clip you play, yeah, they'd snap the thumbs, you know, smash your thumbs. The Garand is actually really good. There, yeah. it's 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 a solid rifle. It's just that uh, they wanted to update it because uh, right. they wanted to shrink the caliber or the mm. size of the bullet. Okay, John Curry says M1A is a beautiful rifle, much nicer than a Scar. I agree. I do because Luke's got the Scar 20s and I've got an M1A and we go to the range and I'm just like I like mine better. <laughs> I do. You know, uh, it is what it is. My favorite is my uh, Winchester Repeater 357 Magnum. It yeah, it's great. Yeah. I love it. A shotgun with twenty five rounds would be great for home protection. That cr <laughs> that crook yeah. that crook running around your house, you well, got to reload, man. Yeah, Buck shot, you're gonna get him. Yeah, but I'll tell you, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. So it's got uh, dual mag tube, twelve shells each. If you're it's using, wild. if you use the shorter <laughs> shells, so I, I forgot what they're called, but they have the shorter shells, uh, the smaller ones. You yeah. can get way more in there. Yeah. Uh, but then you hold one in the, in the in the chamber itself, so it goes twenty five. Oh, okay, got it. But it can switch between the two mag tubes with a, gotcha. with a switch in the back. So yeah. uh, the great thing about it is you can put your non your less lethals or your bird shot in one side, and yeah. your lethals, your buckshot or whatever else slugs yeah. in the other side. And so in the instance of home defense. It actually is really great for home defense. Yeah, I'm uh, you don't you don't necessarily need the KSG twenty five. The, the KSG uh, 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 itself, I think, holds like twelve or whatever. But you can actually flick the switch and mm. use birdshot. And then if things are really dangerous, you can flip the switch and then use whatever else you've loaded in the weapon. Yeah. Uh, I always recommend, however, everybody, a few things is always get training. Of course. Guns guns are as serious as they as anything could get. Always follow the rules, and they actually have. I don't know if you call it gun insurance. I think it's gun oh, yeah. insurance. Yeah, right? yeah. Yep. 
I don't USCCA, know if they call it insurance. USCCA has uh, has an insurance policy that's available. Um, but that's where, like, if you get into any legal issues, they will. They'll, yeah, they, yeah. They and it's not them. expensive. One of the things that the left loves to do is they love to go ahead and be like, "Oh, we should charge everyone blah 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 insurance." I have yeah. insurance, and I pay like a hundred bucks a year for it. It doesn't cost anything because nobody kills people with guns. That ha like you don't get yeah. insurance if you're going to go and murder someone. <laughs> like you don't. For real. Stupid fraud. idiots. <laughs> but you, but. Any anybody anybody into guns will tell you get training first and foremost. Absolutely. And the funny thing is, these leftists are like, we need to mandate this, mandate that. And I'm like, bro, every single person at the gun store will ask you to come to their training course. Yeah, of course. Or, and 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 will advocate that you get your training and yeah. learn the rules and all that stuff before anything else. And, and they take pride to it. it. Yeah. Oh yeah, for That's sure. What they do. They and not, not only that, like Luke Rakowski, for instance loves doing it and yep. loves bringing his friends to do the training i have like 15 certificates i go to one I, I try to go to one every every year i missed this past year but i try to go to whether it be rifle or handgun or something like that i mean if you're going to carry a gun which i carry a gun like if you're going to carry it you need to go and get training and like mm -hmm. so yep. yeah get training all right ghost wolf primal says tim have you ever talked to nick Friedis? yes he's been on the show i think twice yep. he's been on mm -hmm. twice yes yeah he's a good dude we like him he's great he says, uh, Republican member of the House of Delegates in 2016. He is. He's a good dude. Yeah. Like having him on. All right. Well, let's, uh-oh. Uh uh-oh. Jake the Crypto Snack says, Phil, why did you have to ruin my night? I'm going to have to redo my whole pedal board now. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> just get the regular figured black it out. wah pedal. Just he just figured it out. He, did, he didn't know all along that it had that on there? Most Come people on. don't know. I mean, that's Wait, why so, That's why it got on there. That. Look, if you put like Hitler's 14 <laughs> words, everyone would be freaking out. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, correctly. Yeah. Yeah. But like this slide, this it goes under the radar noise. because our entire educational yeah. system is totally red washed. Yeah. McCarthy yeah. didn't go far enough agree here here so those it's, it's like those uh, pedal? not like requested by one guy and then yeah, made it's, signature it's just a wah pedal it's just a wah pedal it's red it's got oh, a star yeah. on it and it's got no, a, a it, yeah. genocidal slogan on the side nice. there's many more that do not have genocidal slogans on the side that i would <laughs> yeah. advise to go but, that person but really had a history to figure that out i gotta be honest <laughs> yeah. i mean do 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 you really need I, i'm gonna get so much hate for this but do you really need a pedal board at this point I mean, it depends if you're going to do stuff live, yeah, if you're doing it live you can do it without yeah, it, but, but, but I, like, I just have a, a multi-pedal like mixer board, yeah. you know what I mean? Like you mm -hmm. get two of them, you've got eight pedals. Yeah, that, that's fine. I think like getting like a whole bunch of crazy pedals and having this like array of $500 pedals fun. is, it's fun, I but mean, you know, do you need to? I don't know. Look, you know. all you really need is just the expression pedal. Yeah, and then exactly. honestly, you can just program it into your show. Into so that way, all the changes happen on your on your axe effect at the right time. And they're all triggered by your click yep. track. Mm -hmm. So you don't have exactly. to worry about changing pedals or dancing around. It's all programmed. It all runs off the click. Right. I almost put a chaos pad on my guitar. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I think I think Matt Bellamy of Muse had that. Like but in in the actual body of it, I think he had a custom build with a wow. chaos pad in it. I'm not sure, <laughs> not 100 percent sure, but I took a mini chaos pad. For those that I don't know what that is, it's like basically a touch pad that yeah. when you touch it, it makes sounds, and you can move your finger around and it, and it and has different axes as to what the sounds will yeah, do. X Y X Y. Yeah, so like of. tone and like modulation oh. or whatever. Right. And, uh, and he that he put the guitar through the chaos pad, right? Yeah. So when okay. you strum, you could hit the chaos pad, and I th yeah, I that's think sick. Matt had the chaos pad, and I'm not sure <laughs> exactly what he had or what it was. Right. But all I know is I'm assuming that's what it was because I'm not 100% sure. And then I went out and I was like, I got I to gotta build something like this. So I, I, I used uh, putty to stick it to my Telecaster. Mm -hmm. Wild, dude. And a <laughs> mini cast cool. pad. It was awesome. Yeah. Dude, it worked so well. I should, I should do that again. You can get I, a Luther to I, install I one, I guarantee. Mm. Let's do it. Let's, we, we're supposed to build a custom guitar. Let's get a custom build hey, with a yeah. touchpad in it. Somebody hit me up about building a guitar and we just never got around to yeah, doing it. Yeah, the, the, sent, somebody sent one. I'm not yeah. sure if you customize it or anything, but they they sent a guitar. Let's make it happen. I mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, I defer guitar? to Carter. Carter, you are in charge of music. Yeah, so. hit me up. <laughs> All right, we'll grab some more. What have we here? Kako says ninety nine percent of pilots agree with you, but we don't know who's in the back. I only found out because I asked who are the people with the envelopes. Mm. I suppose the issue is, you know, let me just put it this way: if there's a pilot getting ready to take off. And then 20 people with envelopes show up and that pilot says to the gate agent, hey, who are these people with the envelopes? And they go, those are illegal immigrants. And he goes, okay, the plane's not leaving. They will remove those people from the flight. Yeah, yeah the pilot does charge. They do have like that kind of authority, don't they? Pilot, really just so. say off the plane now. Yeah. That's, I don't care. Like if you, if you told me these people are being trafficked, they're not, they're illegal immigrants being trafficked. 
Just say, I'm not going to fly with those people on my plane. And that's it. End of story. It's like I watch a video where a lady got kicked off because she was arguing with a flight attendant. Mm -hmm. You mean to tell me you can't kick off someone for being in a, for, yeah. for, for, for trying to be trafficked? I don't know. That sounds like the easiest way to get rid of me. Say you need law enforcement to come in. I mean, I, someone could check this or whatever, but I do believe that the pilot has, like, just like the captain of a ship, the captain of the pilot yeah. of the plane has final say. If he says someone goes, they yeah. go, and he's like, the, the flight attendants authority. have that authority. That's what I think. Yeah, yeah, I think so. It's not just that. Even if you didn't have the authority, you can be like, look, boss, I'm not flying a plane. I'm not going to be the guy trafficking these people. You know what I mean? You want you want someone to traffic undocumented aliens and go to jail or whatever. You find somebody else to do it. But that's the thing. Here, here's, 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 what, here's what I what, what I see is happening. There will be a lot of pilots who will just be like, if I just say nothing, no one will ever get mad at me and they'll never know I did it. Yeah. That basically is saying, yeah, I'll commit the crime. It's fine. I'm getting a paycheck. I don't want to risk it. I worked for a company once, a nonprofit. They sent us out to fundraise. We were doing street fundraising. Let, let, me, let me tell you a story about a company I worked for. When Deepwater Horizon... Uh, had the disaster and oil was spilling. They gave us these pieces of paper with a fact sheet. And I went, wow, I believed the fact sheet. And so when I went out to, uh, I was on, I think I was on Sunset in Los Angeles. I was near the CNN building and near Amoeba Music, if you guys know Amoeba. And I was waving to people being like, hey, we're raising money. We're building awareness and we're advocating members of Congress to enact environmental policy. Here's our information. We need you to give us money. And people were like, yes, of course. Oh, man, deep water horizon. That was so horrible. That oil spill. And I'm like, right, we need better protections. And then one guy came up to me and he was like, you're lying. And I said, what do you mean? That's not how much oil is being spilled. That's not true. And I was like, what? And I looked at it and I forgot. What the, it's been a decade. But I was like, it's been more than a decade, actually. It's been like 12 years. And I was God. like, uh, no, it's like 10,000 or something. He's like, no, it isn't. It's way less than that. And he was like, I mean, it's bad, but you're out here lying to people. What are you exaggerating? So they give you money. And I was like, I, I got to be honest, man. We, these are the, our bosses give us these fact sheets. I, we just, I just assumed it was true. And he goes, well, it's not true. And you should stop lying to people. Mm. And I was like, I agree. <laughs> and so I immediately called the office and I said, hey, man, the fact sheets you gave us are wrong. I'm not going to lie to people to convince them to give me money. And they said, well, we'll fix it, but just keep working anyway. Mm. And I said, No. And I, that was it, hung up, went back and said, if you're going to tell me to lie to people to get them to give me money, that's fraud. I'm not going to do it. Yeah. And they were like, okay, we'll fix it. Someone tweeted at me saying Matt from Muse did have the chaos pad. It was a chaos pad. Yeah. Cool. I, I didn't know exactly what it was. I just saw him playing once and I assumed that's what it was. Yeah. And the reason I'm careful to say it, because it may have been a different company or something, but he had like a touch thing in it. So I built one. But anyway, <laughs> I digress. Look, man, I ended up, I ended up, uh, Let's just say leaving that company in dispute. And that was one of the final moments when they told me, just keep fundraising. And I said, I will not use, I will not lie to people for money. That's me. You know, you do you, I guess. Chris Larson says, I backed the gold reserve, but where is the reserve kept? Yeah, well, Fort, 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 Fort Knox is empty, suppose, wasn't it? Yeah, they haven't given a good accounting lately. What's yeah, left yeah. in there? If there's any left, you yeah. know, at this point. Yeah, I've been asking for that information. Well, well ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you so much for, for hanging out. It's been a blast. Head over to TimCast.com. Click join us, become a member. Because with your support, we can do crazy things. And we've got a bunch of really great plans. We're hoping to have the funds to be able to go to uh, as many primary events as possible. So we've got probably, I, I don't know if we'll do Super Tuesday. Because for March, we're planning this big Pittsburgh event. And uh, we're hoping we can pull it off. It's not going to be very easy. And the reason is politicians are scared. That's right. The people who are running for president are terrified to enter an arena where I say crazy things. And, uh, you know, to, to, to put it much more simply, we've heard from a lot of people who are in politics. They don't actually want to talk about topical news. They want to talk about controlled issues. So ask yourself this. If you ever watch a podcast and you're wondering at why a major breaking story wasn't addressed, especially as it pertains to a certain political candidate, it's probably because the candidate said, I'll come on your show as long as you don't talk about X. And then the podcast said, OK, we'll do that. We don't. We tell people we just pull up whatever's in the big whatever's whatever's big in the news. There are certain things we will at Timcast agree we won't talk about. If someone comes on the show and they're like, I, I don't want to talk about religion. I'm like, oh, I don't care. Like, we're here to talk about the news. If you don't talk about religion, I'm not going to bug you about religion. But if you come here and say, oh, did you hear about that Epstein thing? I don't want to bring up the Epstein thing. I'll be like, well, that's the news. So you're out of luck. But this means a lot of politicians 
eh, they're not going to want to do it. But uh, so we got plans. And uh, because of you guys as members, those of you who hang out in the Discord especially, we are able to budget effectively and make plans for what we're going to do throughout the year. And we're going to do a bunch of really, really fun and crazy stuff. The The big goal is we're doing this thing with Vivek in five days. Woof, five days. The tickets that people bought for this show, they're not just sitting in an auditorium looking up at a stage. They're going to be sitting on chairs probably like 10 feet away from all of us. And we're going to ask questions and we're going to hang out. So it's it's much more of a hangout than anything else, which means we got a lot of security. We got a lot of vetting. It means some tickets may get kicked back because, you know, if, if some someone with nefarious, nefarious uh, intentions wants to come in, then we're going to push those tickets to somebody else. But uh, should be a lot of fun. You can follow the show at TimCast IRL. You can follow me personally at TimCast. Uh, Rep Mooney, do you want to shout anything out? Oh, gosh. <clears throat> Well, uh, shout out to my wife and three kids <laughs> for uh, sticking with the, sticking with the gentleman in politics. But you know, thanks for having me on the show. Thanks to good old West Virginians for allowing me the chance to represent them in Congress. And I'm running for the U.S. Senate. And Mooney for WV dot com is my website. Twitter right on Twitter yeah. X. Uh, just Mooney for WV and Mooney for a rep. I think it's Rep Alex Mooney's Twitter handle. I, I don't right know, on. man. I don't got do people all that to do stuff. that stuff. <laughs> 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 you worry about getting the gold standard back. You yeah. get the people to worry about Twitter. Yeah. yeah. Slash X. Yeah. All right. Right on. Thanks for hanging out. Rep Alex Mooney. Carter. I think it is Rep Alex Mooney because I, I searched it to make thank sure you. before I tagged you. I didn't want to tag the wrong one. <laughs> oh, thank um, you. But I just want to say to everyone who uh, supported us with Together Again, thank you so much. I spent the last two weeks digging into exactly why only a quarter of our sales they Not said were going to be reported. Yeah, uh, weren't. Uh, this song did better than any of the other ones. And it's our I, biggest release ever. Man, you guys rock. I mean, out of, out of five songs. Yeah. But this one really hit, and um, I've seen behind the curtain on how it's tracked, and I've become a savant on Billboard charts at this point, so we're <laughs> let, getting let, there. Let, let me make it quick for everybody. So what, Billboard decided they will no longer count certain sales, uh, direct customer sales. So, what, so here's how it works. You set up your store. What they're basically saying is if you want to chart, you have to go through iTunes and Amazon. Oh. Big tech owns the space now. Yep. So if you want to own your own digital store for selling your music, you no longer get to be a part of the of, of the charting process. This is what I was saying. They want to try and gatekeep and control it, but it's the hardest thing for them to do. So they play dirty games like this. There's a company called Luminate. They track all sales and streams and premium streams. It's, it's a bunch of different things they track. Those numbers then get reported to Billboard. The Luminate and the direct-to-customer companies, there's three companies. So we sell our song, you guys buy it, and they report the number to Luminate. Luminate tracks and accumulates all the data from all the different platforms and gives it to Billboard, and then Billboard throws our views in the trash and says we don't count those. The two companies in the front had no idea that Billboard was doing that. It is a dirty game, but we're going to win. So hopefully we have the next song, Eyes of Advice, out uh, really soon. As well as, uh, I think we're calling it a hunger inside. Yes. Really soon, yes. and then I think we're gonna we're gonna try and get. I don't know how many songs that puts it'll put us at for the album, like eight. I'm working on trying to figure out what we should put all on it, but we'll definitely have eight. I think, eight I, I, and then I, I just started writing one today, which is, right. but I'll keep close to the chest on this one. But I think uh, we'll, we'll end up with like nine or ten, possibly, because the other thing I think we have to uh, record and figure out how to record effectively is words in a book. But that should hit us. That should be relatively easy easier even though it's kind of a hard hard song to record but then about 10 so yeah 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 but anyway um it's gonna be great uh big plans for trash house which you can follow at you just go to trash house uh, records.com uh, it will redirect you to the youtube um if you want to follow me personally uh, just carter banks or at carter banks on twitter and um yeah and, re and, and also eyes of advice is the song is done uh, a hunger inside is it's done, but we're we're messing around with it. Uh, and then we've got potentially words in a book and a new song I'm going to write. But these these are these are both relatively simpler songs that shouldn't take us that long. And the reason I'm saying this is because what I would really prefer to do right now is finish James O'Keefe's song more than anything else. But I feel like I don't want to just it's it's been long enough. We should just put out the first album for Tim Cast before we start working on James's stuff. But then uh, the other thing we need to do is uh, we need to hire more engineers to work under Carter so that we can start ramping up the production and bring on other artists. And uh, I, I'm really hoping we can get like two two bands under the label that uh, we can find organically, like new artists that we can promote and stuff like that. But I actually, I think 
I think we've got some hits for James. James has got some good song ideas. Very talented guy. I think the stuff we produce with James O'Keefe in the videos are going to smash the records. Uh, I'm, I mean, uh, break the records and smash the charts. So uh, really excited. Anyway, Phil. Hi, I am uh, Phil That Remains on X or Twix. I am Phil That Remains Official on Instagram. The band is all that remains. You can follow us on Spotify, Apple Music, uh, Amazon Music, YouTube, you know, Pandora, the internet. And uh, I am Surge.com. Again, I want to shout out uh, homie Suit and Tie Guy for sending me the record. If anyone makes dance music records, send them to me. I make records and like records and we'll play them for real if they're good. Uh, again, promoting culture, everything like that. So, yeah. Right on. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll put out Surge's stuff too. Yeah, that's, that's That's all there. All right, everybody. You got one more? Or? Twitter's at Moody for WV. There, there you go. go. <laughs> Good correction. All right, everybody. Thanks for hanging out. We will have clips throughout the weekend and we'll be back on Monday.